Hey, True Believers England team here, and we decided what the hell, let's do a uh, a tier list. And I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to hook this up to both the, the uh, I'll just share it out. Anywho, we're going to be doing the DC Comics live action uh, tier list. We're going to be ranking everything. We want you guys to join in, so feel free to do that. I haven't shared this out either, so uh, a lot of stuff I, I didn't do because, you know, I've never done this before. But you know what? I think this should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, uh, I was waiting to do this one for uh, when Black Adam came out. So we would have all of them. I didn't want it to become obsolete. Could add it to the after. list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I figure, what the hell? Let's uh, let's get to it. Let's have a little fun with this stuff, you know? Uh, I did, in fact, include everything. Uh, it was talked about, should we include the Superman versus Mole Man, Superman versus the uh, Adam, you know, Adam, Adam in versus Superman. Uh, and at first I was like, yeah, let's start it at Batman 66. Then I thought, you know what? Nah, let's do them all. Might <laughs> as well. Because look, there's some old folks like myself uh, who was there when they first came out in 1920s. Or actually it was the 1930, 40 and 50s. But yeah, no, I, it would have been, been around the serial era. I got very lucky. My my wife uh, usually doesn't buy me comic book related sh too much for Christmas, but this time around, it was a while back. She got me this set of Superman films in a tin box that had everything, like not just Superman, Superman two, three, Superman four, Quest for Peace. It had, uh, but also uh, all the Superman Jesus Returns. Ones and it stuff. had every one of the. Uh, it had every one of the. Fleischer cartoons. It had Super Pup, a TV show that they tried to put out in the 1950s. It had so freaking much, including the Adam, uh, Adam and versus Superman, and Superman versus the Mole Man. So I was just rock on. And sometimes he was I having a super day. But sure. uh, Jay Lucian is pointing out something, and that and, and it is true. No serials. I didn't put in the serials. Uh, it's just straight up movies. So for that, I was thinking if we ever do that, it would uh, it yeah, would be releases. Yeah, it is, and is it, it would be its own today. tier list as well. But yeah, we're gonna do movies here, and uh, why not? Let's uh, let's get started here. And uh, have you seen either Superman and the Mole Men uh, and Superman and the Atom? I have. I watched them on a whim, kind of mentally riffing them on YouTube once. Um, I, I'm, I'm just gonna say I think that the comic book genre has come a long ways, so they're probably gonna be somewhere near the bottom. It's not that I don't enjoy them, especially for the cheesy retro factor of it all and mm -hmm. the the comic bookiness of them, but again. It'd be kind of a shame if they were anywhere near the top of the list. Well, yeah, of course. If I, I always wondered that also. You say, oh, no, I love, you know, name movie creator or uh, band, maybe. Their very first thing that they ever did, but I really don't like everything as much afterwards. So, yeah, to me, that's like, yeah, so you're saying. So your you're saying they is, never improved and they peaked yeah, early is what you're saying. And they've been on a decline ever since. What? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I can honestly say that about New Gaiman. I don't think he ever did anything as awesome as the Sandman afterwards. You know American what? Gods was good. Never, never wear is pretty good or never. Yeah, it's never wear. Like Never there are other good things that Neil Gaiman did, but nothing but is yeah, nothing well, that reached the levels of Sandman. I know so. you guys like your S tiers, so I included one. Uh, so it's awful, it's average, it's good, it's great, and it's iconic. All there right, so iconic is the S tier. I yeah. I wouldn't include it because I think great just says it all. Okay, so but uh, there you go. I yeah, listen. but some, some things some things are better than great. Some things define entire generations and so on. So there's that. Well, we'll see if DC has any of those. Got one. Um, I, I'm I'm going to be simping for a few here. That's gonna that might be controversial, but oh well. Okay, I'm pretty sure we will. All right, we're going to start right off, and the first one is in fact George Reeves as Superman in Superman and the Mole Men. Uh, you said you have seen this one. Do you remember anything about it? Um, it was very much 
cheesy so like i seriously thought it was one of the serials when i saw it oh, okay. um, yeah it's because, black and white it's very low budget it's it, uh, it, it, it very much had that serial vibe i didn't really mm -hmm. i actually didn't realize there was a distinction between um superman and the mole men and uh superman versus the uh adam man versus superman as being theatrical releases until you mentioned it and then i was like wait really those were theatric oh, okay never mind um, I, do, I i am uh i am being told by marania that maybe what i saw was the serial i thought it was a movie i've got it as a movie like it's all put together it's not broken up so perhaps i made a mistake and put adam man versus superman in there with uh without knowing what i was talking about on that one okay so it's, it's i will possible, say but regardless um, oops <laughs> uh, yeah but um i i mean there is there is a joy to them because of the again the kind of pulpy serially retro factor and the just being willing to go for it kind of uh -huh. but at the uh -huh. same time it's very it's a comic book movie that ed wood might have made <laughs> Okay, to, now, to put it that oh, way. man, I just realized something. I shouldn't have put an iconic there. I don't have bad. Uh, I just got awful, average, good, great, and iconic. That's what it should have been. Well, well, hold on. I am going to change up a few things while we're talking about this. Then let's uh, let me change this up. We okay. interrupt our regularly scheduled tier listing. For oh, please, come on. It's uh, it's me. You ever expect a professional a professional on <laughs> I, this channel? You that are was the, in the that wrong. Was the, that was the joke. That was yeah. the joke. Thank you for completely shitting on my attempt to lampshade. Oh, thing. sorry, sorry, sorry. I I, I shat on your attempt. To, okay, so why is it? All right. Um, I edited, and does it stay edited, or are we okay? I just fucked everything up. Bum, bum, bum. Like I said, don't expect. Uh... There we go. Ah, here we go. Awesome. We got the save. I did the tier get edited. Awful bad. This one will go to average. I assume you didn't throw in the TV shows either. So, no. Nope. Uh... Nope. No, that, woman, that is no, no that will have to be the, that will have to be its own animal as well. Well, yeah, and I'm especially given the CW, there are plenty of live action super uh, DC shows to pull from. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Do, 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 do. Okay, awful bad average. Good. And iconic. That sounds good to me. So yep. you still got your S tier. Good is good. Iconic is S tier. That yep. there you go. Okay, but we're talking about Superman the Mole Man. Look, I I think it's a great kids film. Uh, as far as that, you know, everything's concerned. As far as that is, um, I in all honesty. As much as I enjoy it, I don't think I watch it too much. I would put it on the average because it's not bad. It's not great. It's something when you see it, you can enjoy it. But honestly, how many times are you going to be like, hey, I want to watch a Superman movie. Let's put in the mole men. Yeah, yeah. There's the, again, it gets points for its retro credentials and being kind of the first outing, but meh. So average is, is fine. I, I would have said bad because I, I thought awful with being harsh but i'm fine with it being an average all righty uh let's see next up we've got aquaman which i think is freaking great so uh i mean you know i put the word iconic up here but i think it's uh, it's pretty damn great um as far as what we're we're saying because otherwise i would give it an a plus i would put it up there but as for what we're doing if we have iconic movies, which in all honesty, only one's going to make it there, in my opinion. Um, I would put uh, I would definitely put on either iconic or uh, good level. 
Yeah, I, I, I'd say, I'd say it's good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it great. I think there's plenty of room for improvement. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the sequel is going to give us that improvement because of the um, behind the scenes controversy. Fuck you, Amber Heard. But um, <laughs> that's that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say good. It's certainly one of DC's best efforts so far in the kind of new cinematic uh, universe cycle. Obviously, of things. they they got away from the blonde guy, but they I think I never really kind of pictured Aquaman as the surfer type. You know, the the bro dude. But I kind of like it that way. It works a bit, and they they it, didn't, but they didn't make him a like they didn't make him the butt of the joke. They just made him someone right. who's capable of making jokes, which is fine. One of my favorite scenes is when he and his father are in the bar, and they're drinking, and these guys come up, and they um, it looks like they're gonna fight, and all they want to do is drink drink with them, you know, take selfies and all that kind of stuff, and. I thought, wait a second, you know, I love this scene so much because we're always told that Aquaman was raised in a fisher in, in a fishing town. So why not act like these uh the well, I guess they would be what longshoremen or something, or these boat the, these fishermen, the kind yeah. you would see on like uh on the, the show and all that kind of stuff. Deadliest catch and, yeah, and, 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 and it, Things really makes nature. it makes sense for that. It makes sense. It's, for a, that. it's a fishing village, ergo, yeah. in the modern context, that's you know deadly catch. Uh, good from RDV. We got good from uh, Jay Austin. If you like the Reef series, you would definitely like Moments as Maranya. Uh, to do to do uh, a for Aquaman. Put it in great. Says Evil Black Cat. I I kind of agree with that, uh, but it does look more like he deserves. Uh, from uh, everybody saying he's going to go in gr uh, good and not iconic. Okay, uh, I made mistake with Adam Man. Um, it's a serial; shouldn't be here. If I figure out a way to remove it, I will. But uh, I'm I'm not thinking it should go in bad. I th you know. So what it, do you want to do? With me it? It's mean to put it in. It, it's mean to put it in we'll put it bad right or awful. It's just it's perfect. okay. Next up, we have Batman 1966. This movie was just absolutely uh, vilified. Cheesy as hell. <laughs> yeah, when this, when, when we hit the '80s and we're about to get the Tim Burton film, and Batman had uh, just maybe a few. It was like uh, three years earlier. We got Dark Knight Returns, so we're back to gritty Batman. We're you know it's in, in the the. Everybody just wants to wash the flavor of Batman 66 out of their mouths at that point. And for a long time, Batman 66 was vilified. I loved it because this was my childhood. This is what I came home from school. It was always on the reruns and such. Uh, after we did our homework, we were able to watch it. As a matter of fact, I did my homework as quickly as possible so I could so watch that you it. You could watch it, yeah. Love this show. In fact, I never hated this film, but as I got older, I learned to enjoy it more just based on how fun it is, just based on the silliness of it. The Some uh, days you just can't get rid of a bomb. The, one of the most famous uh, the scenes in comic book movie history now. Um, but to me, the what, as I grew older, one scene that really... Uh, really just makes me laugh my ass off was you sold a nuclear submarine to a man who didn't bring you ID. What was his name? Uh, P N Gwen. And he's and, and the Admiral on the other end. Did I do something wrong? Batman. <laughs> I love that scene. It's just yes, filled yes, with stupid stuff like that. Um, I personally am going iconic on Batman 66. I don't think it, I mean, it's great. But it deserves that one tear up. What I I was gonna put it in like I, I I was gonna put it in good and and call it a day because like okay it's it, there's a, I think there's a reason why we've all why why we all cringe just a little bit it with regards to the silver ageness of the Adam West show. It's great for what it was, you know, if it weren't for the Adam West show, keeping the concept of Batman alive, we probably never would have gotten to, um, 
to Tim Burton era or Frank Miller or any of the the more um, traditional, quote unquote, Batman. But at the same time, it's probably a good thing that we moved away from um, moved away from the Silver Age. Ultimately, I mean, look at what happened when Joel Schumacher, in his ignorance, didn't realize that we had moved on and tried to give us a theatrical version of that. And and kudos to uh, kudos to Batman sixty six. Joel Schumacher's attempt to mimic it was worse than it. So meh. Uh, so I I'd, I'd say good, and I think that's me being charitable. I think okay. being objective, I'd put it in average. But uh, like you say, there's a lot of nostalgia well, for it, and it, it does. Per- it, it it's a meme movie. It, it it is made almost entirely of meme. And well, it Austin knows it, so. puts it in the great category, and Jay puts it in good. And then we have Marania saying it's bonkers good, put it in good or higher. Uh, she mentioned good, so it goes there as well. Batman, uh, be Batman 66. Okay, I think that's another for good. If, is this the shark movie? If so, average, says RDV. All righty. Uh, shark. Hey, yes, yes. This, is, this, uh, is the, this is the movie what, with what has the... Uh, and bat shark repellent. Evil black cat. Holy mean. long winded talk up, Batman. Put it in iconic. <laughs> and so we got that. I thought this was going to be the past Sunday. I had a little trouble on Sunday that uh, did not allow me to go on live. Um, but hey, we're here. Uh, we cringe at the Silver Age because we've become so stuck up as an audience, says Austin. Uh, I love sil- Silver Age silliness and Golden Age goofiness these days. Sometimes you need a silly take on a superhero. I'm tired of the idea that everything has to be grim and gritty. It um, okay, but, but we'll get to that, uh, and we'll get to that. But uh, you just got to understand, there was this thing that happened after Dark Knight and Watchmen, where it is almost like you couldn't tell the heroes from the villains except for who had their name on the top of the cover. Uh, Batman 66 is one of the reasons DC is still around and Joel Schumacher had no choice, but judging by the votes, it looks like Batman joins Aquaman in the good category. This one is going to cause some fights. Batman v Superman. I will let you start. Um, I would put it in average. It's not like, it, it's probably the best of the Snyderverse with the exception possibly of the Snyder Justice League. And that gets that gets bonus points for simply existing at all, given the mountains that needed to be moved to get it there. But, like, I genuinely thought Man of Steel was awful. And I maintain that Man of Steel is awful. We'll get there. I, I, th- I thought that um, Batman v Superman was a massive improvement on um ma- massive okay. improvement on man of steel but i still wouldn't call it good because so it's, it's still it's still taking a running jump off a short pier kind of thing okay um, now um jay is saying uh bbsd you don't kill jimmy olsen and get away with it uh d is i guess bad all right yeah uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. We've got uh, after that. Uh, average says comic book frog. All righty. And then we have BVS is awful. Pure garbage. And let's see. Batman v Superman. Bad, 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 says Marania. Uh, D for BVS, says Jim Sorensen. All righty. Uh, BVS is subpar. That's not one of the choices, but okay. Uh, Batman v Superman, hot garbage awful, says Fawn. And, wow, uh, I didn't think I was going to be the nice one. Here. I thought we get some is Slater fan whatever your here. lowest tier is, says Omar. I hope that's not a general, I'm going to f- fail everything, because that just isn't in the, uh, it, that's not in the conversation, you know. Uh, if you have an actual take on BBS, I would love to hear it. But I don't want to hear, oh, everything in the Snyder Vest sucks because I hate those people on Twitter or some bullshit like that. 
if you've got something to say about individual films, by all means. People have uh, strong feelings about the Snyderverse, though, to be fair. I, I that's get it, but that's I kind of why I was I trying want, to be nice if, to If it. you're going to say, like, I don't want any over income, because it's bullshit. It's a bullshit, and, and it's kind of a pussy way out. I don't, but it's like my wife. You know what my wife says? I don't like Westerns. What, what do you mean? Like, you don't, because... The, the entire Western, goddamn thing. Yeah, a Western no. could be anything from Dances with Wolves to freaking War Wagon, you know, and there's a lot of stuff in the whole Western thing. And she's just like, I don't like Westerns. Yeah, I, the I, entire I, I genre. You haven't seen all the West. You're not telling me anything you, yeah. by saying yeah, by saying that. And then I swear to gosh, I got her to narrow it down. Why don't you like Westerns? I kid you not. Do you know what she said? They're too brown. So anyway, I mean, um, <laughs> I, I, as a general rule, she's not terribly wrong. Like I understand where she's coming from there a little bit. But but yeah, all I'm saying is don't I, I don't vote on something because oh I don't like you know and because that's not talking about stuff by by the by the same token the the zack snyder's approach can do no wrong people well let's let's be let's real say, with ourselves oh, the same way. yeah it, it goes for that too i mean i could say i love dc comic book movies that but i've got to rank all of these based <laughs> there's on, a, there's a lot of yeah. versions of those you're yeah. gonna have to narrow okay, it down so jp fawn also says it's awful uh, they didn't adapt Batman. They adapted Azrael Batman and called him Bruce Wayne. That's see, there you go. Put it in awful says black cat. Wow. Uh, blazing saddles is a Western. Exactly. BBS had horrible pacing says Jay Lucy. Uh, BBS it however did. did have the best Batman fight scene. Yes, it did. I don't hate Batman versus Superman. Never did. I don't like a lot of the things they, that it did. Like, uh, I hate the fact that they killed Superman at the end because the death of Superman should have been its own trilogy, not just its own movie. It should have been its own trilogy. And they kind of took that away from us. Well, by that same token, so should have uh, Dark Knight Returns been its own thing. And and that that well, is the biggest sin that no one can argue with BDS is it took yeah, the it, death it, of it, Superman and um parts of the dark knight well, returns it, yeah, and scoops them together it did, and scene, made them... it did a scene or two but it really should you it, it, these deserve their own trilogies and not their own like the two movies that uh that based the animated dark knight returns awesome by the way yeah that being said would if i'm really kind of matching up all the stuff i liked about batman and uh versus superman all the way stuff that i didn't like i would uh i would go average on it uh myself with all of the um, with all of the votes, we've got five and awful, three and bad, and three and average. I think it hits the bad tier. What do yep. you say? Yep, right. and that that's that's fair. I'm not going to fight anyone on that. That's all fair. Right. I, I, like I say, I was trying to be nice to it in in the hopes that we weren't going to get a bunch of Snyder fanboys in here going, yep. put it in the S tier. Derp. Hey, malfunction. How you doing? Saying, uh, yeah, it was big enough for a Death Super trilogy. It should have been. It, you're, you're, it, it absolutely should have been a trilogy. Also, there wasn't very much versusing going on in Batman versus exactly. Superman. Exactly. Yeah. That, that uh -huh. in and of itself is a travesty okay. against cinema. Next up, we are talking about an. Uh, it, 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 I really, I don't know if I should have put this out because it's not theatrical released, but um, it was released on Hulu. It's a documentary called Batman and Bill. But you know what? Screw it. I want it on there, and I'm pulling. Uh, I'm pulling rank. My, my, my channel. I get to put. I get to do this, right? Um, mm -hmm. If look, we. I know we said iconic at the top, but it could be. It could just as well be great, fantastic, whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be iconic. It could be all that. Batman and Bill is a revelation of a film. Of how one of the greatest contributors to comic books, not just DC, not just Batman, the stuff that he brought into the Batman ethos led to things that would be on other people's books across the span of time, as far as comic books are concerned. This is all about Bill Finger and the quest to get him credit on Batman products. He created a lot of the stuff that you you know associated to Batman, 
unfortunately, uh, Bob Kane. And I tell you what, you watch this movie, you're going to lose some respect for Bob Kane. But um, he created a lot of the stuff that Bob Kane took credit for. And this movie is a documentary that it, it just walks you through everything as they're trying to get credit for uh, Bill Finger. Bill Finger, and uh, I guess this will be a spoiler alert. So five, four, three, two, one. Bill Finger died penniless and alone in a freaking apartment. He's comic book. It was one of those things. Bill Finger, one of the greatest comic book contributors of all time, was one of those. uh, The smell came from underneath the door bodies. Same thing happened to uh, Steve Ditko as well. With with, um, with Bob Kane just reaping all the rewards. So Mm -hmm. this movie is powerful as. To the point where you get to you get to see an air of uh, of uh, Bill Finger watching Batman versus Superman, which we would just derided, being the very first thing that had created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Uh, incredible, uh, incredible movie. Highly recommended if you haven't seen it. I would put this in iconic in a heartbeat. Uh, I I haven't seen this yet, so I'm gonna okay. have to take your word for it. Uh, Moran, you saying good or great between Bill Finger and Jerry Robinson. They gave Batman a lot of iconic Batman stuff that Bob Kane borrowed the credit for. Um, Batman and uh, Bill is good. Okay, so we got one iconic for me and two goods. Uh, and a what on earth is uh, Bats and Bill is a great. So there we go. We got two and two. Uh, never heard of it till now. Highly recommend you guys go find it. I, I know it's on Hulu at the very least. So, uh, yeah, if you can check it out, there you go. Uh, Kane's original art for Bar- Batman was worse than horrible. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's another thing. It's uh, It alludes to the fact that it was Bill Finger who actually created the look of Batman because Bob Kane had this red-suited guy with fake wings. Which, which again, reminds me a lot of uh, the relationship between Steve Ditko and uh, Stan Lee in relationship yeah. to Doctor Strange. Because uh, Steve Ditko basically created everything we now know about Doctor Strange visually and conceptually from being a massive fan of a Vincent Price movie, which is called The Raven, which is obviously a riff off of uh, Edgar Allan Poe. But it came out in the exact same year uh that dr strange would come out so yeah well here's the thing we have two good we have two iconic um as far as batman and bill is concerned i could pull rank uh but my thinking is is if a lot of people haven't seen it it can't exactly reach iconic we we, we can't really judge it yet based on yeah yeah so i'm gonna put it in i'm gonna put in good however i i do stand by what i said and i hope i i hope others see it seek it out so there you go yeah if nothing else we've just done an ad for it so yeah uh yeah i know i just i just basically uh fawned all over it uh batman and bill is a documentary based uh malfunction about a uh about trying to get the guy who wrote a lot of the iconic stuff into Batman. So, yeah. Uh, so please, by all means, uh, I would love to hear you guys. Um, uh, if you go see it, leave in the uh, description below. Was I right? Is it a great freaking documentary about Batman? By all means, put it in there. Uh, by all rights, it shouldn't even be on the tier. But you know what? Once again, my list, I'm going to break some rules. Next, I, I, up, will, though, I, I will ask, though, in relation to this, did you put... Um... Uh, Professor Marston and the Wonder and the Wonder that Woman. I did not. No, on did here not. too. Yeah, no, I didn't. Well, that's not quite fair then. If you're yeah, who cares? Once again, magic. my list. All right. So, anywho, let's go up to one. I don't think is going to cause a lot of uh, arguments here. We've got Batman and Robin, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's bad. So, okay, so here's the thing. I remember when this first came out. I was working as a projectionist in movie theater. And um, one of the my friends, he was managing the theater, uh, went and saw it. We didn't have it. He went and saw it at another theater, came into work. He goes, yeah, I saw it today. And I was like, okay, how was it? He goes, it was great. It was fantastic. I loved it, blah, blah. This man raved about it. So 
I went in. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, no. I went in and, and I was like, all right, let's see this. So, okay, here we go. And by the time I heard Cowabunga, it was like that scene in The Simpsons. And if you watch right here, you can see where his heart breaks. <laughs> I was like, what are they doing? Oh God, no. Uh, yeah, it was just, it, it was so bad. It was so, so bad. Um, the thing, here's the weird thing though. I would watch this movie more than any of the other Batman movies. When when the DVD came out and I had the box set, I would watch it more than any other because I could not believe they made a Batman movie that bad. How I, does this exist? It's a, it's a living it, it was it's just, a yeah, cinematic like trade like, okay, I can't maybe, look away. Maybe I could find something to love in this film. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> and 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 while we're while we're griping about Batman and Robin for the 500th time, at 500 millionth time, as has been done on the internet. Can we all just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that they had Arnold freaking Schwarzenegger in a Batman movie, and they also had him in that same movie, Bane, as a character, yeah, and no, no right. one thought to themselves to put 90s Arnie in the role of Bane. I, can, can we all can we all just have a moment of silence for how earth shatteringly stupid that is? Now, here's uh, as far as uh, Batman and Robin is concerned. I put it in awful, obviously. Um, I do have to say that now, anytime I watch Batman and Robin, and I do occasionally, instead of watching the actual movie, I watch it with commentary. Because for because an the hour, and a half, hour and a half, Joel Schumacher saying, yeah, here, this scene didn't really work. And I have to apologize. I'm so sorry. I let the I instead of standing up for myself, I, I let Warner Brothers push me around on a lot of things. And uh, it, I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm saying it's my fault for not standing up to what I originally wanted. And um, I guess the ducks, the, the buck start, stops here. So I'm sorry that the movie turned out the way it's supposed to be. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. I'm getting my apology. So yeah, I I, I do that. Okay, so okay, uh, but jo Joy, Joy, I have to I have to ask you, which breach of the lore would you rather have? One in which Bane is a brainless zombie, or one in which he's played by the greatest uh, masculine, you know, masculine bodied individual of the '90s. Now, and he just Jim happens Sorensen, to be the wrong race. Jim Sorensen is saying C for Batman and Robin. Uh, Batman and Robin, bad, 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 bad uh, says Marania, sad too, because it had so much potential. Uh, Jay agrees with me that it's awful. Um, all righty, Marania said bad. And uh, let's see, do, 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 do. Uh, Batgirl was hot. That's about it, says comic book frog. Uh, do, 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 do. let's see as bad as this movie was it's a room style so bad it's good film wherever your meat hooker category is okay i'll put another average uh average for me says comic book frog all righty um ba -ba -boom. batman and robin got me to hate mr freeze it's awful yep says uh jp fawn uh bane's supposed to be hispanic says jay put it in bad says evil black cat uh, Ed Harris would have been the perfect Mr. Freeze. I think that's a great casting right there. Hon honestly, I would have gone with Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer as Mr. Freeze would have been good. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> also, the Spinaz says Ray Garst would have been going with awful. the Heart of Ice Origin. Sorry. But. All righty. Uh, I never thought about it. Harris as Mr. Freeze. That's a good call. Yeah. So is Kelsey Grammer. Uh, okay, so at the end, we have three averages, three bads, and four awfuls. I think it goes to bad. As well it should. Goodbye. Uh, no, nah, it should go in awful, but... Well, okay, but I... There's a lot of really bad DC movies that people just don't remember, so we're going to have to free up some space in the awful category somewhere. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, so now we're talking Batman Begins. The movie that rekindled uh, the Batman franchise after uh, Batman and Robin destroyed it. I thought it was kind of weird. They didn't just, let's get a good Batman out there as soon as possible. And they waited so long. But uh, what you going to do? We got Christian Bale. 
We got Scarecrow. We got eh, something of a Ra's al Ghul. Um, average. I, you're putting in an average? Yeah. All righty. Um, we got a weird looking Batmobile, but I got to say, there's a lot of stuff I love about this film. I love the look of this movie, in all honesty, with the uh, narrows and everything. I would put this in good. Not great, but I would definitely put it in good myself. All right, so we got one average. We got one good. Let's see. Hey, Zach, what's up? Uh, comic Book Frog is saying good. All righty. And uh, Kelsey Grammer, however, would make a good Dr. Hugo Strange. Well, he's been playing psychiatrist. Batman Begins is good, says Jay Lucen. Honestly, uh, if, I, if I wanted to... says Jim. If I, if I wanted to put uh, Kelsey Grammer in something that I think he'd be perfect for, the Clock King. That, he would, okay. he would Batman be Begins is my favorite of the Clock trilogy, King. and it goes good. And that is from J.P. Fawn. Batman Begins is average. A good movie, not a great uh, Batman adaptation, though it is my favorite in, of the Nolan trilogy. Batman um, Begins is average, a good movie. The Dark Knight exists in that trilogy, sir. I think we can all agree you're objectively wrong. Uh, <laughs> put it in good, says evil. All righty. Uh, let's see. I didn't really like Bale Batman movies, what I saw of them, but I'll reserve judgment if a tiebreaker is needed over uh, average or best for me, says Marania. Okay, that's average. Wow. Yeah, I maintain What's above that the good? Dark Knight That's what I think Batman good. Begins is, and that is iconic or great. Um, interesting choice, says Rhaegar, based on BTS uh, clock. Batman Begins, average, are you smoking crack? It's A+, plus, says Rhaegar. All righty. No, uh, that would be its sequel. Its sequel is so, A+, plus. it is meh. Here's where we stand. Four average, five good, and two iconic. So I guess it goes in good. Good. All righty. Bum, bum. And next up, we've got Baby. I compare you to a kiss from a rose on a grave. Batman Forever. You want to start us off on this one? It's. It's bad. It's not awful like its sequel is, but it's bad. All righty. You want to give a, a little bit of an. Uh, I mean, considering I, I, we've got I, I mean, okay. Go I grew up on the first two Tim Burton Batman movies. All right. And when I first saw, um, I actually saw Batman and Robin before I saw Batman Forever. But when I first saw the Joel Schumacher ones, I seriously thought that it was supposed to be a reboot. And then I saw the same actor playing Alfred, and I was just like, wait, you mean to tell me that these are supposed to be, these four movies are supposed to be in the same universe? Who was smoking? All the drugs and why were they smoking all the drugs? First of all, Ed Edward Nigma is many things, but co a comedic character is not freaking one of them. And you have freaking Jim Carrey. And uh, again, like I think they would have been better off just rebooting the franchise entirely than trying to have it this this halfway point. Because like if they had built a new Gotham from ground up and a new Batman as a character from the ground up and done a more comedic 60s-ish version, it, but with modern visual effects, that could have worked. But well, the fact that they're supposed Zach to be in the same universe. Uh, okay, I, uh, but Zach said it's awful. What do you say? I'm fine... I'm fine with it being an awful under the proviso okay. that it is nowhere near as bad as its right. sequel. We got to we gotta do quick takes on the movies because there's a lot of them. This is true. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Batman Forever is a D from Rhaegar. Batman Forever is bad, says Jay. <laughs> uh, Jim Sorensen is D. D is bad, by the way, guys. Uh, now, this is the movie that needed to reset the Riddler for me. Bad, says J.P. Fawn. Um Let's see. Uh, Rhaegar, I don't have the heart to give it an F. Uh, good to see you all. Sister Hillium, how do you do? Um, Batman Begins is so good, uh, except for the I don't have to save you part. Uh, and like Batman Forever, it's not great. Uh, good for the former, average for the latter. I don't know what you're saying, Omar. Is that, do you rate it 
uh, awful or good, bad? I, I think he was referring to he wants a vote for good for uh, Batman Begins and and bad for, for Batman, uh, Forever. Okay. Batman Forever. Yeah, I didn't know if it was um, it was good for the save you part or bad. We're we're, go or... we're gonna have we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to ask Marania to okay. moderate Do the voting you, again. I think. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's just I didn't understand what was going on. Okay, but you explained it. All right. No, no worries. Um, so average for Batman Forever. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. Batman Forever gets unfair hate, and it's much better than people say. I think it is good. The Riddler is one of the better portrayals of the character, and the man uh, crush plot worked for him, says Marania. All righty, that's a good. I, I couldn't disagree with you more on the Riddler. I don't know. Uh, Riddler can be clever and funny at the same time. Uh, it did sell a lot of toys. Uh Schumacher Batman movies are pretty much just two-hour action figure commercials, and he admitted it. Yeah, C wasn't so yeah. Bad. So hey. that's uh, and Robin is too old. I agree. Okay, here's my relationship with the uh, with with Batman Forever. Really, uh, quick take. I think this was the perfect Batman '66 reboot. Um, granted, Batman and Robin understanding that it is basically a continuation of the Batman 66 universe rather than the Tim Burton universe. You can enjoy it on that level, but I think Batman forever finds that sweet spot. It is a Batman movie made for kids. And based on that, I actually have a good time with it and uh, I put it in the good category, but here's where we stand. We have mostly four bad. And then we have two average, two good, and two awful. So we have two on the four on uh, for the goods. We have two on the bads. I'm are, are the awfuls. I I think it averages it out average. and puts it in average. I think. All right, there we go. Okay, next up, Batman, nineteen eighty nine, kids. Let me tell you, let me put this into historical uh, content. This movie, you can watch it now and go, well, that's all right. That's a good movie. It's, it's, it's fine. But you have no freaking clue if you weren't there. It was amazing in 89. <laughs> it, no, it, was, it wasn't just, yeah, an, uh, an amazing movie. And finally, we got Batman like he is in the comics to a certain extent. But it was a phenomena. It was crazy the way people... We're acting and, and just so excited for this movie. I had people because I was I was managing a movie theater at this time, and I had people pay to see a, a to see the trailer. They would buy a ticket, they would watch the trailer and leave. Which I thought, well, that's dumb. Watch a fucking movie. Uh, but yeah, they they would actually do that. They would just go see the trailer. This movie was huge. I had a second job at at a comic book shop where. They had people come in looking for bootleg stuff, and yeah, we were selling some. I remember I got a pen. It it was the Joker. It said, this town needs an enema. Um, it well, It's iconic, this, mo this movie. Whether or, in my opinion, well, I think uh, I would say, like, if I were talking about how I feel about the film, I put it in good. But I've got to admit, this movie is iconic. So I'm going to put it in great. How about you? Yeah, I, I'm not even gonna front. Um, the first, the the two Tim Burton Batman movies were the first comic book movies I ever watched as a child, and I wore out the VHS player playing those back to back basically every single day. So I can't, in good conscience, say it's anything other than iconic, especially given how closely the um animated series ties in with it. it it just is my childhood that being said i will i will give it one aspect of criticism which is i like jack nicholson and i like the joker i don't like jack nicholson's joker because there's far too much jack nicholson in jack nicholson's joker and nowhere near enough joker in that in jack nicholson's joker we'll have to agree to disagree but it is your opinion and where do you put it 
I I agree with you. It's in it's in like yeah, it's my it's time. my childhood. I can't I can't even uh, front Jay and say Lucian, I can put it anywhere Jay else. Jason agrees with us, but Froggy says uh, good. Uh, Batman uh, Austin says iconic. Um, Marania says good, and then we have Jim saying iconic, and we've got uh, I freaking love Keaton's Batman. A prayer to Bales. Agreed. Batman eighty nine is iconic. Says Joe Rogers. Uh, let's see, Jim Sorensen. Yes, iconic. Uh, Rhaegar says. All right, iconic is good. Let me clear up the shit because I've seen a couple of uh, people put up there. Iconic means good. It means great. It means top. It's the S tier. So blah, blah, blah. Yeah, iconic can mean you because it's a bit. Let's face it. Rocky Horror Picture Show is iconic. But we're using it as absolutely great. And you know it. And you know that because you're not well actualing anybody because it's at the fucking top. So there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and also, there's something to be said for a movie like Rocky Horror that even though it's know. got its moments, it, we're still talking about it several years later, aren't we? So it is iconic and it deserves to be. So there's that. Uh, the sequel to Batman 89 average. We'll get there. <laughs> the Batman 89 was a phenomena. Like you said, it's, uh, uh, you know what? Right now we're up to eight and two. I think this is going in iconic because Omar, Omar says it, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, huh? <laughs> Average to uh, Rhaegar. Um, let's see. Iconic then. 89 is good uh, Good now. Says Comic Book Frog. Uh, never rub another man's rhubarb. What does iconic actually mean? Well, in this case, as I said, great. It's at the top of the goddamn thing. How can you not see that? It's, it's, it's there. It's freaking, it's at the top. It it's changed the genre the forever. It defined video. the generation, et cetera, et cetera. The, yeah. that's this is what Batman eighty nine is good. Uh, I feel that they should play Batman eighty nine in theaters once a year. <laughs> Says JP Fawn. This is iconic as a dance with the devil under pale moonlight. So people black. Yeah, it's iconic. We're already up to ten. Um, so there we go. Let's put it up. Top. Also, best Batmobile in cinematic history. Okay. Um, uh, no. Yes. Because Batman 66 exists. Uh, yeah, but that's not... That's a convertible with Bat motifs. That's not a Batmobile. I don't even understand the language you're speaking right now, son. I don't know what you're talking about. All righty, so next up, we're going to go to its sequel, and we have Batman Returns. By the way, I had this poster for a while. This was really sought after. Because it didn't have the, it had this flat top right here. And uh, Warner Brothers didn't like it, so they recalled the movie poster. All righty. Batman Returns. McDonald's uh, biggest enemy in 1992. Uh, they they didn't like it because they were trying to sell uh, Happy Meal toys. This is what brought it uh, to the Think of the children. I yeah. watched Batman. Uh, I, I watch Batman Returns every Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, there, it's good. It's fine. Uh, it does have its problems. It's got quite a few problems. Um, maybe I do put it in average. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's, it's good. It's just... Uh, what? I don't know. You say something about it. I don't know what to say. Put it right up there next to its older sibling. Jesus Christ. Why do people hate on Batman Go Returns ahead. so much? Uh, like, I, I, genuinely, I genuinely don't get it because in my opinion, Batman Returns is better than the first one it did it did what a sequel is supposed to do it took everything that the, the first one did right and turned it up to an 11 and also michelle pfeiffer's catwoman is a freaking revelation and is a much better villain than um than jack nicholson's joker so yeah i'm putting it right up there i'm putting it right up there next to the other one it's iconic to me it's better okay. than the first one. you got it you got it in iconic all right Hmm. And you got an iconic. I've got it in. Uh, I've got it in average. Uh, let's see. Do 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 do. Uh, Batman Returns. 
is bad says uh okay hold on batman returns is a mixed bag for me good but by a slim margin says uh jp uh i did like your statement there i'm gonna change my name to well actually <laughs> Rhaegar said that uh batman returns is bad says comic book frog uh let's see batman returns is average says austin jim says it's average and then we have batman returns is a d says Rhaegar. i all righty and batman returns is average at best says Maranya. you people uh, have recently suffered head trauma or no we've just, just we've just seen the movie we disagree with you i think you're, you're saying that the i don't i mean look you're right michelle pfeiffer was good as great no great as catwoman um but this the other stuff the uh circus the penguins the yeah okay so uh it, it, it was bonkers and I, in my opinion it was bonkers in a good way and as as for the moral panic around it I, my response is the response i usually give to all moral panics which is your morality has no authority here go away zach says bad um let's see penguin was bad he wasn't a gangster uh batman returns is great very stylized says joe rogers okay he's agreeing with you thank you a sane human being Okay. Um, did you did you Batman Returns is iconic, awesome, and great? Says MK. Alrighty, that's three. My biggest regret was not getting a Catwoman spinoff after Batman Returns. Yeah, I'm still waiting for a, Bat a Catwoman movie. Uh, Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer is still looking good, but now is she? Yeah, uh, for for you know, I don't even think you have to use the words for her age. Michelle Pfeiffer still looks great. She's she's like Kate Blanchett. I swear she gets more beautiful as she ages. That like being said, I don't think she could pull off the acrobatics. I had anymore. no idea it was a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas. Yeah, iconic for Michelle Pfeiffer says Evil Black Cat portrayal in the ballroom scene alone. It made me root for the Bat Cat. All righty, we've got uh, we're getting there, guys. Not a fan of the creepy mutant penguin. Too many plot threads. Not enough focus on Batman himself, and I hate that he kills wantonly. Uh, I, yeah. What's up, hon? What happened? Um, Hold on, guys. Read some comments there. Uh, I'll be right back. All righty. What are, what are people saying? Um, uh, Catwoman's origin is very strange. Was it? I, I mean... The scenes where it happens are kind of strange, but it's a woman going through a mental breakdown, so kind of should be. Um, uh, let's see who else is saying things. Uh, Batman Returns took the weakest part to Batman in 89. Let's spend it on that. Yeah. See, I just dis I disagree with you. I think it, it doubled down on the direction that Batman eighty nine started us in. So I, I don't think it's the weakest parts at all. I like I said, I thought the weakest part of eighty nine was Jack Nicholson's Joker because he wasn't playing a version of the Joker. He was playing himself as a supervillain, and that's fine, but it's not the Joker. Jokers are good based on being able to to disappear into the role. Um, like Heath Ledger, um, Joaquin Phoenix, or even Mark Hamill, um, voice-wise. Um, and that, and that's why I don't particularly like Jack Nicholson Joker. Whereas, whereas Danny DeVito wasn't playing himself, which is more than I can say for Jack Nicholson, as we, as odd as his rendition was, and Michelle Pfeiffer drop kicked an entire generation into puberty with her version and also probably gave a bunch of people BDSM fetishes. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, guys. Elizabeth uh, thinks she may have contracted some food poisoning. She, she got um, sushi. Oh, no. Yeah, but I know she uh, Ubered that stuff in, so I don't know what that means. So basically, I gave her a book, a bookmark, and told her, well, you're not feverish. You're just going to have to ride this one out. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Icon. Okay, we had that. Um, and it looks like all of the actual votes are in. So where we stand is four, four S tiers or iconic, one, um, one good, three, uh, or I'm sorry, four average and three bad. Wow. So the big battle is between average and iconic with one good. Uh, I'd say it goes to good. What do you what do you think from the number? I, I, I mean, I'm tempted. To, I'm tempted to use my one saving grace for this, but there's another movie I want to use my one saving grace for later. So good is fine. Now here is something. We've got the Batman. I uh, came out earlier this year. Blew me the freaking hell away. Do I think it's iconic? Do I think it's great though? I I, I mean, and I I really do. You know what? I think I can do this. Let's just put it here. Since Iconic was causing a, a bit of this, and, and I get it. I get it. Uh, let's put it here. Boom. Okay. There we go. Right? Okay. Just great. Do I think this was great? Yes. Freaking hell yes for a lot of reasons. I love the visuals of this. I like the way they handled Batman. Because for the for the first time, we were shown what the city and what the city's criminals think and do and react when it comes to the Batman. The, the thief who robs a store, runs out into the street, sees a dark area, sees the bat signal, and makes sure that he stays on the road instead of goes down any uh, dark alleys. That spoke volumes to me. The uh, juxtaposition between the Riddler looking into the window of his victim versus the Batman doing the same thing to Catwoman as he's following, as she, you know, as she is the object of his interest. I love those scenes. I had a moment in the uh, in the theater when the Batmobile revved up. I just, you know, it's that chill feeling where it's like. Oh, shit. It was just, I had so much fun with this movie. And it was well-written, well-directed. The cinematography's on freaking point. How how much uh, how much people went off on the fact that uh, Twilight Guy was going to be in this film. And he did great. Robert Pattinson. I like the Zodiac Killer version of the Riddler. Um, there's actually, there's nothing I don't like about this film. I put it, I put it in great, easily put this in great. Um, I, I'd say good. I don't think it's enough to reach an iconic status to, well, or, no, a great, I, or a great, that's why I changed status it to status. great. Yeah. Because, well, well, yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on the level of something like Batman 89. I do like that it's in, in the same way, uh, Walking Phoenix's Joker was what if what if a comic book movie, but also a Martin Scorsese movie. Mm -hmm. um, the Batman was what if a comic book movie, but also a psychological thriller along the lines of Seven or Silence of the Lambs. My only complaint with it is they cut out the um, they cut out the Joker as Hannibal Lecter scene, and that's a really awesome scene. But if my only complaint about it is you should have left one of the deleted scenes in, I can't really fault it. But again, I also can't put it on the level of something like Batman '89. So I think it goes to to uh, good for me. Okay. All righty, let me get to where we start up here. Um, looks like uh, the Batman is iconic. The only thing I really hated was the Riddler laugh fest with the Joker, says J.P. Fawn. All right, so we've got two iconics, one good. Uh, the Batman, since I've had more time to process it, is a C minus. I really get really good reasons as to why, but it took time to think about it when I first saw it. It would have been a B, all right? So I'll put you down for average. Uh, let's see. Much better Penguin, in my opinion, says Zach. Uh, okay. Uh, is there any you guys haven't seen? Uh, I've seen all of them. Uh, no more Joker. Uh, should, okay, let's see. Where are we going here? 
Um, haven't seen it. Please don't spoil it. I didn't. Mutant Penguin is like, okay. Do, 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 do. Haven't seen the Batman. I'm waiting to watch it at the moment. I want to watch like I need chocolate. Batman is an A or a great already. And that was from Ahsoka. The Batman is this year's best comic movie. I would remove the word comic and just say that. Yes, I know a lot of people are going for Top Gun. That was second best. All righty. So MK puts it at the top. Uh, best Batman movie to date, says Comic Book Frog. All righty. Um, good, says Omar Harris. Uh, let's see, it needs a few years to become iconic. Yeah, but I'm just, that's why I changed it to great. Obviously, iconic has a different meaning. So do you do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think, I mean, I, I it's like, um, okay, does this mean good, bad? Or, you know, um, hey, has there been one that no one has seen? Um, not yet. Y'all call me Crazy Joe? Well, now you can call me Batman. So, okay, uh, let's see. Pattinson did good. Unfortunately, the writing of it, not so iconic. I did like the detective uh, nature of it. So did I. Uh, this is an updated Riddler. Donna's performance was excellent, says JP Fawn. I have a huge crush on Zoe's Catwoman. Uh, all righty. It looks like... Um, there you go. Okay, that's all the votes we've got. Uh, okay, so we only had... Uh, Eight, seven votes that time. Wow, not a lot of people seeing. Okay, now, now i got to scroll up. Best Batman movie to date. That's all I've seen. It would have, like, here, I'll show you something. There's some stiff competition there, my friend. I think you might want to rephrase that. Okay, that's, uh, that's what, uh, four, seven, ten, twelve... 14, 16 letters. And here you have four. Just saying. All right. But uh, most of them went to iconic. So there we go. All right. All right. So let's put that right up there next to the Batman. All right. Birds of Prey. This fucking shit was awful. Bad. <laughs> Be gone. Get, get thee to the bottom of the list, you evil, evil thing, you. I This movie was freaking awful. This movie was awful. There's... There are no good words to say. None. What's his name uh, from Moulin Rouge? Uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor was the best thing about this. This movie sucked. You know, I, I I was working at that AMC at this point in time. I went and saw it, and I got it for free. And I wanted my I wanted other people's money back. It, it this this movie is <coughs> offensive. Yep. This movie, and I'm not talking about offensive. Like, oh my gosh, the language. There's so much graphic. This or but this movie is so bad. It's offensive. It 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 steal it steals life from you is what it does. It, this it movie makes you... is so bad. It knows it's bad, so it strives to be awful, like yeah, worse than anything else. Yeah, it, 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 it it's trying to piss you off. It it is to it is to DC what Captain Marvel was or the Eternals was to Marvel recently. If you if you were in an overheated room removing a catheter just by pulling, it would be more ple pleasant than watching Birds of Prey. There's there's nothing good. I'm not even looking. Oh wait, now I can look. Turds of Grey uh, <laughs> says Rhaegar. Awful. Burn all comic uh, copies says Comic Book Frog. Never saw it. That's the best in review this show will ever get. Kill okay? it with fire. <laughs> Never yep. saw it is the best review that, that Birds of Prey deserves. There, um, there are two kinds of people in this world. The people who hate Birds of Prey and the, and people, the people who, who have not see seen it. Birds of Prey. <laughs> ah, well, yeah, I'm glad. There's not one person uh, standing up for this. Birds of Prey is worse than the first Suicide Squad. 
Ed, at least the first Suicide Squad was entertaining on a visceral level. Awful, it belongs in the tra trash heaps in the landfills. I haven't seen, but but if Englantine doesn't like it, it says a lot. That's, yeah, I am the Paula Abdul of this particular American Idol set here. I am, I'm a shill for superhero movies for the most part. I just still try to, if I'm reviewing a movie and I'm saying it's great, I still try to see what other people might not like about a movie. I cannot see why you would like Birds of Prey. Is it, no. wait, wait, hold on. Is it for the 50 something Renee Montoya? Is it for the uh, is it for the overweight slow Cassie Kane? Is it for the ugly ugly outfits they put Harley Quinn into? Is it for the Black Canary who just isn't Black Canary? The only thing actually, I'm going to say this. There's another thing that they got right to a certain extent. I like the Huntress for the most part. I would have rather of this movie being about her, but this movie. Is so, f but bad. that but that that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? It should have been a Gotham City Sirens movie or a Birds of Prey movie. Instead, it was Harley Quinn's feminist fantasies, also occasionally featuring members of the Gotham City Sirens and the Birds of Prey. Okay, now we get to the brand new one. Just came out, kids. I can understand if not all of you have seen it. I'm gonna say flat out good. I don't yep. think I, I love this film personally, but I know it's a flawed movie. What I love about this movie is there is no woke shit to get in the way. It is pure fantasy superhero film. This is one of the closest movies you're going to get to a comic book. And I'm not saying that all the characters are comic book accurate to 100%. What I'm saying is this movie watches like a comic book reads especially a 90s comic where it will have uh, some quiet parts to set up the next action scene. And there's not much to it other than that. And that's one of the reasons why I love this film, but I understand it's not great. So I'm going to put it in good. How about you, sir? I, I feel a similar way about Black Adam that I felt about Multiverse of Badness in that I know it's shaky. I know there are execution issues. I know there are technical issues. I know there are script issues. But there was a lot of awesome here in between all of the questionable technical choices. That being said, I, I prefer Multiverse of Badness over Black Adam. But it does also get points for A, The Rock plays a character other than The Rock for once. And B they didn't completely massacre Dr. Fate. And given that not even the comics have managed to do that recently, it gets points for not completely massacring Dr. Fate as a character. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, so I good. like this one. This is, I, I, I haven't scrolled down yet, but I do like this. Uh, good evening, all you gentlemen, mobsters, creeps, and crooks. Men in tights chased after you and still you're off the hook. Uh, do you remember the musical episode? Yes, I do. The one and only birds of prey. All right, good, good, uh, good call there, Austin. Uh, let me scroll down here, and you know what? Uh, let's see. Do do do. I'd rather drive over England to with my truck than relive this nightmare. Well, a lot of people would rather do that. Um, let's see. Also, do 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 do. Also, yes, how do you make the Asian chick fat and ugly and then you make Black Canary not a blonde, hot, white chick? That made me mad. Uh, let's see. Black Adam, A, loved it, said uh, Jay Lucen. All righty. And let's see. Haven't seen it. Heard good things. Haven't seen Black Adam. Black Adam was great, says Comic Book Frog. All right. Uh, I watched it twice. Plus, it has JSA, so I'm pretty sure I'll love it. Black Adam, A, loved it. All right. Uh, let's see. Rhaegar, he who says, I uh, haven't seen Black Adam. Uh, do, 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 do. I plan on seeing it. Birds of Prey. Okay, we got. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Masako Tano Gaming didn't stop them from hating Black Adam, but who knows? Probably the same case with Disney uh, paying art. Yeah. Uh, let it, do, do. Black Adam was good, says Joe Rogers. Uh, the Rock as the Rock from Egypt. 
Okay, Black Adam felt like reading John's JSA run. A all day he says, okay, so we got six votes and we're three and three on good and iconic. Uh, let's see, do we have any other? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, but giving points for not completely screwing up characters is sad standard. I, I agree. Uh, well, yeah, but Dr. Fate gets screwed up even in the comics now, so I will take it. <laughs> MK says uh, it's an A plus, and uh, there you go. All righty, he's the tiebreaker. Okay, next up, let's you know maybe I'll just park this right here as we talk about Catwoman. <laughs> you want to go first? Must we? Um, it's it's awful. It's iconically awful. It's, 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 it's awful. It does interesting kinds of awful, but it's awful. I'm going to do something here and, uh, righty. Uh, start right, right there after my little, uh, start voting for. So I, I it helps me to find the things there. Okay. Um, Okay, so I, I remember me and my friend Rob from Extreme Movie Show and somebody I worked with, we went and saw it at the AMC Theater out at uh, iDrive. And I don't know. Um, look, here's the thing. I'm, I watched this. I watched this movie and all I thought was I wish we had a Catwoman movie. This is one of those films that uh, it's a bad movie. It would be a bad movie no matter what. And it's not Catwoman. So it literally just says, okay, it's a bad movie. This plays like, have you ever, have you ever been on a streaming site? Tubi's got these a lot and you'll see like India's version, but it'll be like spider guy and it's an Indian guy. Or, and it's very, or the asylum. Yeah, or, or you'll get a, a low-budget movie that obviously you can tell they're trying to do an iconic character. but Boot, Bootleg version of X, yeah. Dr. Mordred as an XP for Dr. Strange. This, this is that movie. I, I think Catwoman is that kind of movie, but with a bigger budget. And, and it was made by the people who should have known better and done yeah, better. Yeah, you are correct, sir. You are correct, sir. Why didn't they just get Michelle Pfeiffer to come back? Probably the money or the fact that she was at that point 40 something years old. Uh, Catwoman gets an F, says uh, Jim Sorensen. Catwoman is awful, worse because it had some interesting ideas and really bad. That being yeah, bad, that's kind of where I'm at with it because if I, it I worked the a Catwoman game. movie, it might have worked. I liked the game, GameCube game. Uh, it's awful, but nowhere near as bad as uh, Birds of Prey, says Ahsoka. Uh, awful, it's but she looks better than Michelle Pfeiffer, says Zach. That's debatable. I... That woman is the F of Fs. See, I think you guys are giving uh, Birds of Prey way too much credit. Uh, what was up with Adam Smasher and Cyclone? What was the best they could? Uh, no, they actually, I thought they were fine. I mean, they didn't really use them, but yeah, they, they did fine. Awful, says Comic Book Frog. Alrighty, and then we have, uh, let's see, do, 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 awful, says Joe Rogers, Oscar winner, a skin tight, tight suit, hot too, what could go wrong? <laughs> um, let's see, it was a hate crime against cats, awful. All right, we're up to 10. I, I, I mean, it's not, it's not as bad as Cats the movie, but, um, that, that's not a high bar. <laughs> As as far as hate crimes against cats go, I think I think the recent cats adaptation takes it. Alrighty, so uh, yeah, I, it's got ten. It's awful. It's an awful. That this yeah, this this is bad, man. Okay, um, now and un, like I said, we've got a lot of movies to go through tonight. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to give We can you... always split it like we did the horror list. Though, no, we can't because we... we never go back to them. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you a minute and a half. Go. On. Um, What's next? I, I can't On see Constantine. It. Um, it has this niggling little problem of 
It's not a Constantine movie, you cretins. It takes more... It takes more to make a Constantine movie than to just be a cult detective. There are plenty of occult detective characters who are not John Constantine. And this version is one of them. And yeah, but what'd you think about the movie? And moreover, Keanu Reeves was still in his I was Neo, so I have to deadpan everything non acting phase from the early two thousands. Okay. And Th- this this movie was made in I think 2005. It reads like a movie that should have died in 2005, and I hope to God it does. I hope the rumor of a sequel never comes to fruition because when you're doing Constantine, you have a few goals. One is British, two is bastard, and three is unlucky to the point of genocide, and. This John Constantine did none of those. The so best part play? about it was the best part about it was Tilda Swinton as Gabriel, but the lore they made up for demons and angels okay. in that movie makes you're, no freaking sense. And a half is up, dude. So where would you put it? It's it's going it's going in bad. It's not awful. It's not awful, but it's bad. Alrighty, it's bad. Okay, I got you down there for you. Okay, so also. Uh, I, on the other hand, completely disagree as well. Uh, I think it was a fun film. I thought it was a decent film. I would prefer to have had Paul Bettany rather than uh, Keanu Reeves as Constantine. But I thought you, me, and all fun. every same person on the planet. And I liked uh, what's his name, Stellan uh, Peter Stellan, something like that, uh, is the devil. And um, what's her name, who played the ancient one as? Uh, uh, Tilda Swinton as yeah, Gabriel. Is Gabriel. Yeah, great. There's a lot of good stuff to be enjoyed here. And we got to see what's his name die violently. Um, so there you go. Shia, okay, so, Shia LaBeouf Shia as LaBeouf. Thank you Chaz for, for some reason. Thank you for reason. being my, uh, my translator. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, I, so Rhaegar, yeah. on the other hand, said it gets a B. And uh, Comic Book Frog says it's bad. It's the same as you. Alrighty, so let's see. Also, Keanu isn't Constantine. Still, it's good, says Ed Brewer. Constantine is not a Constantine movie, says Asaka. Constantine gets a B, and uh, that is from uh, Jay. Uh, no, we need to give two second votes per movie. Uh, two minutes, we'll still here be, be here on Thursday. Constantine is a D, says Ahsoka. I got you down for that. That is a bad. bad. Alrighty, and uh, let's see. Do-do-do-do. Average, says Omar. Uh, I liked it. Constantine gets a B, and that is from Jim Sorensen. Uh, Evil Black Cat says average, and uh, let's see. Joe Rogers says average. Okie dokie. Uh, oh no, we need a sequel. I, uh, <laughs> it was good for MK. Okay, uh, okay, MK. Uh, I said bad D. Yeah, that's what I got you down for. Uh, I liked it for what it was. Uh, it says, Mel, what would you give it? Um, would you give it the awful, the bad, the average, good, or great? Mal- malfunction. Uh, do, 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 I really like Constantine. I'd never read the comic, so I didn't ne- notice a lot of changes, says Robert Roberts. Uh, and we had the dude who Shazam, I forget his name. Really? Exactly, really Levi. He was in that movie? Um, I don't care what you say. It gets B. Tilda Swinson is everything, says Rhaegar. Okay. Um, well, yeah, but she's everything in every movie she's in. That is true. That awesome. <laughs> okay, so this is what we got. Three people voted bad. Two for average. Five for good. Average, I guess, then. Yeah, it kind of pulls it, uh, the three bad kind of pull it down a little bit. Um, okay, we'll put it in average. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to burn the planet to a cinder for that. Okay. If, you put, about- if, if, it, if it had ended up in good, I would, have, I would have possibly made plans to start jigsaw trapping some people, but that's not here or there. Yeah, you're doing that anyway. So next up. We have Dark Knight Rises. Now, I know this has divided some people. 
especially the fact that we don't even see Batman for like 45 minutes. Um, the death of his parents causes him to go in and train hard to never have these crimes happen to anyone ever again. The death of his girlfriend, the love of his life, causes him to quit. Uh, there's a lot of problems to Dark Knight Rises. Overall, I still enjoy this movie. I can't say I like this movie, mm-hmm. in all honesty. Uh, there's elements I, I I do like Tom Hardy as Bane, even though he's not a big guy. I, I said this when we uh, were talking to Chuck Dixon. He's not a big guy, but he plays big. You know, mm-hmm. um, and yes, of course, if they tilt the camera down, he looks huge. He, play, he plays a big guy on TV, basically. Yeah, basically it. Yeah, you, I thought that he played a fighter a long time ago called Bronson, and I thought the same thing. Um, overall, I think they had a great ideas, but not great execution. So I, I, I say um, I'm going to go average. What about you? I, I agree. I said the same thing about the, the uh, Batman Begins. I genuinely believe there's only one good um, Christopher Nolan Batman movie, and it's good in spite of Christopher Nolan, not because of him, that mm-hmm. being The Dark Knight. Um, that being said, there's a lot, of, a lot of good in The Dark Knight, but Dark Knight Rises suffers from the fact that they should have, in, a, in another life where Heath Ledger didn't die, they would have brought back Joker for the right. sequel, but they didn't. Okay, so, well, average. We got two average, and Malfunction saying good, and so is uh, Joe Rogers. All righty. And uh, Jay Lucen says, great. It gets an A. Dark Knight never rose. He just got bad, says the frog. I love JC. Read all three, uh, 100 plus others. Uh, he is in uh, my, oh, John Constantine. Okay, I had such high hopes when I saw the trailers. It, it had a lot of issues. So, average for Omar. Let's see, DK, DKR is bad, boring, it screws up Bane and Batman, says Austin P. This is Alrighty. also true. Uh, because it came out during the era of Occupy Wall Street and it lines up with the movie Dark Knight Rises, gets a B. Okay, and that, whoa, what happened? Oh, okay, I see, never mind. There we go. All righty, and let's see, do 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 uh, Tom Hardy's Bane voice er, er, is awful. Says comic book for, yeah, it sounds like uh, Professor Pixel's uh, General, General Mortis. See, it was <laughs> definitely a movie with Batman in it, says Jim Sorensen. All righty. Uh, yep. Dark Knight Rises is a great movie, says Asaka. All right. Got you down for that. And uh, Rises was the worst of the three, still average, says Ed Brewer. Bum, bum. I'm going to say average for the Dark Knight Returns, says MK. Uh, too dragged out. Fl- few potholes, not explained. The controversial ending is never good for an ending to a trilogy. I agree. They they need a yep. solid, yeah. And JP Fawn says bad. Yep. Uh, good. There is not much good. Is so much good in it. Hardy is brilliant. I've watched uh, in a lot of uh, Brit stuff. Now I agree with that. I agree with you on that. DKR is good, and Anne Hathaway's Catwoman is the best, says Zach. Michelle uh, Pfeiffer. Anyone even remember Talia Al Ghul was in the movie? I, I uh, kind of say she wasn't. Neither of the uh, neither of the Al Ghuls was really in either of those movies. Okay, <laughs> so here's the problem. We've got three uh, three bads, two iconics, two greats, I should say. Six mm-hmm. average and four goods. I think I think the average is take it. Is everything else average? So it? yeah, average. Yeah, but we've got basically uh, yes, it's seven and eight between average and good. But I guess average gets it by one vote. Well, there were also some other ones that brought it down. So, but that what I'm saying. It, it, this is it would be average, but it's high average. All yeah, right. that's true. Okay, so uh, let's go with. Uh... Here we go. All righty, the Dark Knight is iconic. Um, it's iconic. This is a movie I literally can watch anytime. I yep. love this movie. 
this is one of the movies where it's like um, it transcends its genre, in my opinion. Uh, it was the first it, it kind of plays like a Michael Mann crime film. And it was one of the first ones where I was like, this is great. They made a movie that had a superhero in it. Uh, but yeah, defined this genre more likely. It's the, yeah, it's, the it's the counterweight to Iron Man. kind of. Some of the shots, of course, him standing on the uh, at the wreckage of the building, obviously bringing up images of uh, the towers. Uh, uh, Joker hanging out the police car. Uh, just some great images. Him at the top of the building in Japan. Um, or was it China? China. Shanghai. Shanghai. And uh, was it? Yeah, yeah, Asian place. Point and being can we is, talk about how much uh, Heath Ledger sold his soul to the acting muse for this? In all honesty, I was saying all of the stuff, even without bringing up Heath Ledger's talk about iconic role as the Joker. So yeah, we've got two iconics with us. Um, uh, Dark Knight is iconic, says Jay Lucen. Um, Dark Knight is iconic, says, or, or, or great, says Ahsoka. Dark Knight is great, says The Frog. Uh, iconic S tier, arguably the best Batman movie, says MK. Correct. Iconic uh, Katie Holmes should have played Rachel Dawes, though. I don't disagree. I, I didn't mind Maggie, uh, but Jill and Hall, but yeah, yeah you're Kate you're Holmes you're not wrong, wrong though, sir. Jim Sorensen says he's high right now. Um, Iconic says Evil Black Cat. Uh, let's see, Great says Joe Rogers. All right, and uh, Jim, how can you say the savage? <laughs> uh, let's see, Iconic for sure says Zach. Uh, let's see. TDK is uh, apparently Austin is having the same shit that Jim is. Uh, and like Batman Begins, the writing in a vacuum is good, but not a great Batman adaptation. I'm also not a fan of Ledger's Joker. Now I know you're just trolling. I still like Batman Begins better, but objectively, Dark Knight is greater, says uh, JP Fawn. All right. Uh, let's see. The bank scene alone was great. Best of the uh, three ledges death seal the iconic deal. One iconic role does not a iconic movie make into story. No vote here. Uh, 10 for 10, Malfunction says. All righty. Omar Harris agreed, but her reason was lame. Something about her kids she didn't want. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. That is kind of a lame one. Uh, I know, Austin, I was joking around. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Uh, I swear I predicted Dark Knight to take this whole thing. Could I be right? Maybe, maybe. All righty. Okay, but we do have two for average and 12 uh, for iconic. <laughs> it's going in the great tier, as if there was ever a discussion. For this. Um, okay, next up, let me put out the uh, thing here. Is uh, Green Lantern. I'm going to say don't... this. Okay, go ahead. Uh, do you, go you mind it. if I start on this one? No, go ahead. Go. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. I swear, this is uh, Green Lantern. Let's put it up on the fridge. You know, it's one of those. I. I it's To me, if there is the if, the... if air had a flavor, it would be called Green Lantern. It's not bad. It's not good. Do you even, I mean, I, I, do you sometimes forget that they made a Green Lantern movie? See, here's the thing. I am one of the five people on this planet that does not hate Green Lantern. I don't hate it's, it either. It's not, it's not great by any stretch of anyone's imagination, Power Ring or no freaking Power Ring, but, um, it doesn't. It doesn't deserve to be classed in the same school as like X Men Origins, Wolverine, Catwoman, and and those other right, ones, which right, yeah. it, which is where which is where I which is where I see a lot of people dumping on it because at the very least it was a Green Lantern movie that was for the most part about the Green Lantern mythology. The only things I didn't like about it were the um the random uh, doctor who got infected by Parallax that didn't need to be Hammond, there at all by the way his name was it should have been two different movies one with hammond and one with uh parallax and parallax isn't a cloud that was the era of yeah. the cloud villain by the way yeah it's that's the that's the problem and, and honestly 
while I understand what they were doing, saving Sinestro's turn for later, at the same time, are we are we not going to sit here and say that the villain should have been Sinestro? So, oh my gosh, at- Mark Strong as Sinestro was the best thing. Other yep. than Michael Clark Duncan is uh, is a uh, big guy. Kilowog. Kilowog. Thank you. Um, okay, so where do you? But put yeah, it? I'm putting it in average. It, average. It's okay. We got it, it doesn't deserve the hate, but it doesn't deserve any notary either. Really. Green Lantern D Sinestro Core. Keep it from being an F, says uh, Jay Lucian. Alrighty. Next up. Uh, so far, three out of four DC greats are Batman movies. Yep. Uh, good, says Comic Book Frog. Alrighty. Then GL defines average. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Bad, but entertainingly so, says Zach. All righty. And, uh, yeah, it's just, I, I can watch it, but I don't think I ever have an urge to put it on. That makes any sense. Marania says, Green Lantern gets unfair hate because of its end. Uh, it is an average movie. Stop hating on it, says, uh, says she. Yeah, I agree. All righty. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's there and it's, got it's the effects were ahead of its time. It's a shame. It didn't think of anything interesting to do with them. Haven't seen green lantern. I do remember the trailer says Austin P. Okay. The green lantern is iconic. It's bad, but I'm saying iconic, but why not? Uh, green lantern was enjoyable. I liked it. Good. Says JP fun. All right. And uh, let's see, I'm going to say GL is higher average. The way that uh, they handled Parallax was dumb. The cloud villains make you really want to get to your sky sky beams. Average Sinestro was the best part of the movie, says Joe. Uh, I'm so glad Dormammu wasn't a cloud villain in Doctor Strange 2, or uh, Doctor Strange 1. Uh, he could have easily uh, been another cloud. GL but he wasn't B, uh, it would be an A if they had better CGI and got rid of the parallax bit. All right. The, the other Green problem Lantern I movies. thought was that Ryan Reynolds was playing Guy Gardner, but they called him Hal Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Green Lantern made me so mad. You had a perfect Hal, but uh, the perfect Sinestro and the perfect Kilowog, and they missed the mark. Awful, says Omar. All right. I don't think it's average because it seems to remain in our collective consciousness, says J.P. Fawn. Ignore the cloud monster and the movie is still good and entertaining. Parallax should have been built up uh, for the sequels. Oh, yes, cloud villains. May that trope rot in hell. <laughs> yeah. What should have happened is um, Parallax should have should have turned Sinestro and then the battle could have been between Sinestro and Hal at the end. And of course, Sinestro could have lived to darken the galaxy another day. That would have been a much better okay, cut, it, cut Hammond out entirely. We had three good, but we also had three bad. So uh, nothing uh, is uh, elevating this out of average. We also had one horrible. So yep, it's average. It's average. All right. Bum, bum. Let's bring this down. I'm I'm also working on. I think I've got an idea for a list here. Um, a little different. Uh, okay, so here's a movie not a lot of people know as a DC f- uh, comic. There's a few of them in here like this, but this one is called A History of Violence. And it is based on a Vertigo graphic novel, and it starred uh, what's his name, who played uh, Aragon in Lord of the Rings, and Maria. Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, and it's all about uh, basically this guy. He's he owns a diner, and one day some gangsters come in and start some shit, and he kills them all. And it kind of wakes up the past that he's tried to stay uh, buried, and it's basically. Uh, a, what you think yeah it, it's kind of like an average guy what an average guy can can become when his family is threatened you even have his kids get a little bit more uh dangerous and um a really really hot maria bella seems but anyway yeah. um there you go let me uh we get uh never saw it never saw it i uh, haven't seen it good says ahsoka have you ever seen this movie i i have seen it i think it's good um, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it tied into Vertigo, though. 
Yeah, there's a couple of them on here. <clears throat> DC has a few imprints that uh, gave us some really good movies um, that you don't might not know are actual graphic novel movies. I uh, haven't seen a Harris versus Vigo and Vigo's hot wife dressed as a sexy cheerleader. I told you there was a really good Maria Bello scene in there. And that was it. <laughs> uh, where would you put this comic frog? I thought it was good, bit underrated, but then nobody knows about it. I know. Right. But so far, the ones who have seen it have put it in the good category. How about a list for best use of cloud monsters and sky? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Is Road to Perdition on your list? Why, J.P. Fawn, it is. I uh, didn't know it was a DC film. I thought it was based on an independent film. Heard of it, uh, never saw it. I recommend it. Check it out. Um, but right now, it's going to go to the good. Yep. The only uh, the only people who have seen it are like, dudes, check this one out. Yeah, no, it's All good. Right. Okay. You know, Joker has been out long enough for it to get backlash. So let me hear your backlash. Uh, you're not getting any backlash for me. It is amazing. It goes in the great tier. Okay. Oh, let me put the, let me put up a voting thing. I forgot to do that for history of violence. It saves me time from uh, Who, needing to look through everything. Whoever uh, had the idea to channel the backstory elements of a killing joke through the lens of King of Comedy mm -hmm. deserves an Oscar just for that concept alone. It's the best Joker backstory we'll ever get. And you're you're putting it in the great. Yes, I am. It, it and it is probably going to be end up being iconic. Hell, it's already been iconic once. I, a, I agree it was with a you. New by cycle the way. or two. We truly see the descent of man in this film, um, and somebody who wants to be a better guy. You get that feeling from from him at the uh, at the beginning of the film. But as he's put down and pushed down and pushed down to the point where his mind starts creating its own reality, that is, it's, it's just awesome. It, it's a great it, freaking it, film. It's the opposite. It's, it's the opposite of a hero's journey In a hero's journey. An arrogant asshole gets the shit kicked out of him until he becomes a good person in a villain's journey. you like Joker. You see an optimistic person get treated like Job. Until it breaks him. Until he, it At breaks him, yeah. Uh, oh, hold on. I'm about to. I'll just leave that there for later. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, something kicked up the allergy there. Okay. So like Jay says it was well done. Dark drama, but I didn't like it. So C. He guesses. All right. And then uh, let's see. Another movie fans and audiences love that critics hated. Yeah, I remember all that talk about incels and all that kind of crap. Oh, when it came it's going to cause the fall of society. You really didn't pay attention to the movie, did you? Uh, and, <laughs> when, and what happens? What happens? Joker comes out, and then Frozen 2 comes out, and there's a, there's a machete attack in Frozen 2. Yeah. We're talking about all the violence that Joker is going to cause, and then somebody in a theater, uh, in a Frozen Two theater, attacks another person with a machete. Well, critics, I guess we have a perfect demonstration of what happens when you simply so, can't let it go. Right. But I'm uh, MK said it gets an A. Joe uh, Frog says it gets an A. So we've got two, and then one average. Joe says it's great. As well, we get Joker is great, says ah Ahsoka, excuse me. Um, I haven't seen the Joker, says Jim, recommend it. The Joker is iconic, but hard to watch. But it's yep. great, says J.P. Fawn. I live in New York, so I can relate to a Joker, says MK. All righty. One, one bad day. That's how far the world is from where I am to yep. quote the uh, Joker. Joker is good. It may be great, but for now it's good, says uh, Ed. Okie dokie. And then we've got, I like Joker a lot at first, but I caught it in the, uh, I caught in T the game and it took me outside of the cult following for the movie. It feels like not Joker to me. He is less Joker than Heath Ledger was. Okay. Um, caught on to the game. Oh, 
All right. Uh, good, but I don't like the Joker having a backstory. I'd love it uh, if the sequel does the multiple choice thing where every month. Yeah, I just look at it as a different telling. I mean, you know, one thing we read comic books, right? We've seen Elseworlds. We've seen Batman be fr or Superman be Frankenstein. We've seen Batman be a vampire. Um, in this case, Joker is... You know, it's just an, to me, movies are kind of like else world stories anyway. So long as they keep the core of the character, that's the most important thing. To what me. what I what I like about it is someone is someone read the backstory elements from a killing joke mm -hmm. and they thought to themselves, we could put a king of we could put a spin on this channeling king of comedy and it would be one of the greatest movies ever. And it. One thing that no one can take away from this movie is it answered the question of what if Martin Scorsese wasn't too high and mighty to make a comic book movie? That's exactly what this is. All righty. Uh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got seven greats, one good, one average. And this right. goes into the great category. There we go. Continuing the apparent Batman uh, stronghold in the great category. Yeah, right. There have been Here's a lot of great Batman movies. What do you want? I've I've heard, I've heard some people uh, say it's really really bad. I've heard people say they enjoy it. I've never heard anybody say it's great or anything. And it is Jonah Hex. Have you seen this film? I have. It is bad. Um, it is. It is bad. not awful, but it is bad. Okay. I thought it, it was an okay Western. It's not horrible. I didn't even think it was bad. I do understand, and I could see the elements that would make people not like it. Uh, but, however, I, I would probably go average on this movie. I think it's I think it's fine. Like, if, if it's, it's another one of those movies where if it's on, I'll watch it. But I'm not. I'm not going to seek it out. Like I don't usually go. Oh, I want to watch Jonah Hex. But if I'm looking for a movie to watch, and I say, oh, why not? But I, it, I never it's really... on. It's fine. Go on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like there are. I, I do say to myself, I want to watch the Batman, or I want to watch Wonder Woman, or uh, Aquaman, or something. But yeah, this is one of those films. Like I'll I'll scroll down on the uh, on the DC hub of HBO Max and see Jonah Hex. Sure, why not? Because it takes that much effort, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah. I, I, I would never put effort into seeing Joan Hex. Mm -hmm. All righty, let's see what we got here. Uh, Hex is a D, and the D is for dumb. Joan Hex deserved better. Don't disagree with it. I and agree, that's another thing. Sir. Yeah, you can tell me all the bad things in the world. Wouldn't disagree. Good, says the comic book frog. Asaka says, is average at best and bad at worst. Mm hmm. Well, you've been repeating your uh, your bids on that one there, Ahsoka. I'm going to wait until the repeat. Okay, on the repeat, says average. All right, there we go. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. It's better than Green Lantern. Good, says Zach. Uh, I don't like superhero westerns. Have not seen it, says J.P. Font. Uh, Jonah Hex is bad, but not awful, says Ed Brewer. C for Jonah Hex. That would be an average. Uh, for Jim Sorensen, never saw Jonah Hex, uh, and there are a ton of famous people in this movie. Yeah, Michael F Fassbender, I believe, makes his, uh, or at least one of his American film debuts. And Average Works is a modern Western, says Joe Rogers. All right. And uh, Omar says it's bad, and MK says it's average, which takes the, uh, the average beat the bad by one vote. But I think the bads drag it down. So you think instead of putting in an average, we should put it in bad? I it's bottom fine. of bottom of average. Okay, wait, wait, wait. No, actually, it goes to average because we have two good. Okay, okay, that's so, fine. Yeah, so it gets uh, it does get to average. Average All is right. that's fine. Um, I as you can see, I've got two different ones here. First up. We've got the Zack Snyder Justice League. You want to go on this one first? Uh, I think I think it's good. Um, it would be great if we factor in the effort it took to get there and the sheer act of listening to the fans that took it to exist. But that being said, 
it never it never rises to the point of being great. It's a very it's a very good movie, and it kind of gives you a glimpse of what the Spider Verse might have been if oh, hold on. Warner Brothers wasn't uh, afraid of hold itself. On. Hold on, I I, I forgot. Uh, okay, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting the uh, vote thingy. Here it is. Uh, keep going there, guys. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 Snyder Cut though is good, and it deserves its place in history for the effort it took to you know the mountains it took to move to make the thing. But um, it it never rises to the effect of greatness. It's just good. Good to you. Okay. Yep. Um, this is just fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm on the other end of that particular spectrum. I watched it and I, it's one of those things where why would you cut out all of this stuff? Uh, but Warner brothers for generations has been able to shot themselves in the foot repeatedly. Yeah. Um, there are some yeah. things uh, I didn't like. I didn't like dark side getting defeated in the beginning. I don't think dark side should have ever landed on planet earth. Uh, that should have stood still been Steppenwolf and learning that his uh, acolyte was that tough to beat, that Dark Side was going to take more. I would have loved to have seen that. Um, that being said, what we got, I, I, I loved it. I loved the characters. I love the fact that Cyborg was the heart of this film. The, I mean, you could see exactly what happened because Cyborg was the heart of the film. But if you were going, and by that I mean there's a lot of emotional ties to it, but if you are going, if you get the uh, word from on high that you need to cut this to a two-hour movie, you could keep the plot if you cut out all the cyborg so shots. So, you know, it's it was that case. There's just so much good in this movie. Uh, I I enjoyed it thoroughly. the The way it looked was wonderful. Um, there's not much bad I would say about it, in all honesty. What? What kills it? What kills it for me? And I think Austin P brought this up is the pretentious emo teenager vibe that I always get from Zack Snyder. Ah, he al okay. he always is putting on far more airs than he can actually back up. Okay, I can I, look. I can't argue that. Um, I watched it with my wife, and she was like, "Oh, this is good. This is good." When does this thing end? <laughs> so she was really enjoying it, but uh, she felt like it, it, there definitely does need to be that in, intermission in between. Um, yeah, there we go. I, I give it a great. You give it a good. And uh, Snyder Cut is good, says uh, Ed Brewer. Iconic, says Zach. Uh, let's see, Snyder Cut, uh, better than the theatrical, but not as charming and it gets uh, good from him. Great, says Comic Book Frog. And uh, Asuk says, Jack Snyder's Jail is a great movie, and the fans made it come, too. Uh, another one I will never see. Snyder is the ultimate emo teenager. Uh, bad. I had to stop watching 18 Minutes In, says Evil Black Cat. All righty. Um, haven't seen the Snyder Cut, says Jim Sorensen. Zack Snyder, Just League is iconic. I don't care, says Rhaegar. All righty. Uh, let's see. Haven't seen Snyder Cut. Uh, da, da, da. Snyder Cut was awesome. Great for me. Maybe a little longer. Uh, but hey, compared to Justice uh, League, Snyder Cut was eons. Yeah, well, that's true. That is true. We'll get to the um, we'll get to the Justice League here. In next, as a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Everything Zack Snyder does is overblown and boring. Uh, says Joe Rogers. Okay. This is true, which is why I put it in good instead Three of great. Three more times passes the more forgettable uh, the JLA is. Uh, forgettable the JLA seems to feel average. Says JP Fine. All righty, I'll put the average. All right, to do to do. Uh, iconic strictly because a movement made the film come out. Well, I'd rather you talk about the movie itself. Um, but all right. Uh, do, do, do That's why I separated in my talking fans about it. actually wanted a Snyder cut when Snyder has had nothing but a controversial reputation before. But what we got was great. Uh, I mean, Austin, considering how bad the Justice League was, we wanted to see the full thing. That is true. We took breaks during the movie. When you take break, it ain't that bad, Bragar. I have, first time I saw it, I I watched. You know, it was broken into chapters, and at, at each chapter, I stopped and did a quick review, and then I got back to it. Um, yeah, it was freaking awesome to me. 
Uh, I think the Snyder cut is overrated. Snyder's approach uh, makes sense for the Watchmen, but the darker, more nihilistic tone is out of step with the DCU. Agreed. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I everybody's got their opinions. Uh, right. And that was Omar Harris. Uh, did a whatever D is, by the way. Okie dokie. He picks bad. I pretend Josh Whedon Justice League never happened, says Rhaegar. Okay, but we've got seven iconics or greats. We got four good, but then the other three are average, bad, and awful. So this gets to the good level. Not the great, yep. not the archaic, but uh, based on the uh, averages and such. I, I think good. that's fair. I, I, I think there's enough divisiveness about it that good is is a fair shake okay so now we have the justice league which by the way i've got the dvds for both of them i collect all the dc films um so i've got both i have not put that movie in since the uh, it's since bad the it's, it's, it's bad it's bad I've, I've watched it more than a couple times um there are scenes i like from it yeah, and that's why I'm not saying it's awful. I, I think but, there's, a, there's a fun to it, and there is that Joss Whedon energy to it that makes it an enjoyable bad, but it's bad. Yeah, sitting next to um, next to the Zack Snyder cut, Josh's League is nothing but bad. All right. Uh, oh, let me put in the, uh, the thing here. Just is, Oh, nope, sorry. Justice League. Oh, yes. There we go. And I don't even necessarily blame Joss Whedon for this. I blame Warner Brothers for thinking they can take someone with a completely opposite like, set of skills and vision to Zack Snyder and tell him to finish Zack Snyder's movie. It's not... It's not going to work. They both have their moments of being good, and they both have their moments of being bad, but they are the exact opposite of each other. Who thought this was a good idea? Okay, so uh, Jim says D for the Whedon League. And uh, Justice League is awful, says Ahsoka. And Zach says, eh, it's average. And then, actually, I changed my mind. Justice League is just bad, says Austin P. All righty. Um, let's see, do, do, do JL, uh, see the weaker version, but it has its charms. And that is from Jay Lucian. Awful, says the comic book frog. Uh, I blame Josh Whedon because he could just have refused to do it, but he did it anyway. And JL, uh, just felt like an amalgam of Snyder and Whedon, uh, which didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, says, uh, MK. It's night and day when you compare the two Justice League movies, says Ahsoka. Hot take. I think Justice League is marginally better than the Snyder Cut. It's not great, but at least he tried to make it feel like DC, so average. Hot take indeed. But hey. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun kind of bad, I think. is. is but is, yeah, and, and look, um, I've said this many, many times. If I watch film and don't like it and you like it, you win. So, you know, hey, if that's your Justice League, it's your Justice League, man. Justice League should have been the rival to the Avengers, says Austin, agreed. And Rhaegar says a D, which is bad. And at this point, we have two average, two awfuls, and six bads. So it goes into bad. It's going it's into, into bad. the bads. It's bad. It's bad. Next up, we have the kitchen. The what? I'm pretty sure uh, that's basically what we're going to get a lot of. I, okay, I the kitchen. Um, we've got three three women who are wives of mobsters. And their husbands get assassinated. And so they go about taking over the city's crime. And of course, there's a whole bunch of gangsters that face them down. They and they have to uh, they have to survive while, of course, being the queen pins of crime. My guess is Ahsoka 
and Austin, they, they have what's going to be the main vote with, I haven't seen it. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, yeah, Omar, I count Omar myself is, among the confused Omar here. Omar is agreeing uh, that this should be under the, I haven't seen it. Uh, it was this rec uh, This was about two years ago. This was two years ago it came out. MK is saying, surprisingly fun. I only knew a little of the comic, uh, but it was kind of fun. So good for me, says MK. All righty. And we got a good from MK. James Gunn is now running DC. It's a great thing. And that was, uh, okay. Um, it's horrible. This movie sucked. <laughs> this movie sucked so bad. I, I wanted to like it. I mean, it's got some decent people. I actually like Melissa McCarthy when she's uh, acting in dramatic. Oh, movies. Melissa McCarthy was in it? I, I feel yeah, safe in assuming it's bad. No, no, she was she was in her dramatic role uh, mode, and she actually can act, guys. Uh, surprisingly enough, um, and it's got that lady from The Hands Made Tale. I forget her name. Uh, overall, it's uh, it, it just didn't do it for me. I wanted to like it. It had a horrible twist. Uh, overall, eh. so I give it an awful. MK's got it at good. Uh, oh, Rhaegar says he saw it and uh, he gives it an F. So there you go. All right. So we've got two Fs and we've got one good. And so I guess uh, I'm bad. Yep. Put that there. Okay. Uh, how about The Losers? Have you seen this movie? Uh, this one, I don't think I have. Um, okay. So you got, uh, what's his name? Negan is uh is the lead character you've got chris evans in it you got uh what's her name plays gamora a uh, lot of zoe lot saldana of, yeah zoe saldana they play a kind of like the, it's basically the a team by dc comics that's the movie they um they get left behind and um and they they're on a mission they get left behind and while their helicopter is flying away with some people they had just rescued because they were like, you go first, we'll be there. The helicopter gets shot down and they realized that the people who hired them to do the mission that they were just on wanted to clean house. So now they're uh, kind of spread all over and um, Zoe Saldana comes in and wants to hire the losers uh, to basically defeat the bad guy. That's a, It's a very simple plot. But to me, it's a freaking hell of a good time. So flat out, I give it a good rating. It's not going to, it never would have won any Oscars. But when you put it on, you've got an hour and 45 minutes of pure fun. So yeah, I give it a good. And you said you've never seen it? I have not seen it. I didn't even realize it was a DC thing. Uh, Comic Frog's agreeing with me that it gets a good, and Omar says, nope, it's it's bad. Uh, Zoe Saldana, okay, uh, didn't see it, says Joe, it's a good movie, says Ahsoka. And uh, let's see, Average the Losers was, in my opinion, says MK. And I uh, haven't seen it, Losers a B, underrated and a lot of fun. So Jay Lucen gives it a good as well. Um, which leaves us, uh, the fight between Zoe and uh, Negan is good too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Did we lose you, Dalton? No, I'm still here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, just, and I'm not B, saying anything because I can't comment on this one. And we got a we got a B from the Hominus, and it looks like it's going to end up being a B. It's it's five to two, and one of them is average. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to be in the good category. Okay. A lot of people haven't seen it though. Uh, I would recommend you. It's I think it's on HBO right now, HBO Max, and it's definitely worth the worth the watch. All right, since you uh, you don't like this one, so I need to hit the head. So I will give you a couple of minutes. Uh, which which us. movie? I can't I can't. See it is the... Man of Steel. So go off on. Oh, let me put the voting in. I will be right back. It's 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 bad. It's, uh, hold it's on, dude. let me uh, let me get set up because I I need to hit the head and I'll be right back. Okay. There you go. Well, uh, well, Anglantine is uh, well, Anglantine is freaking uh, relieving himself. I will relieve myself all over the uh, Man of Steel. 
because it's dull, it's gray, it's bleak. It doesn't understand Superman as a freaking character. Zack Snyder and his, well, we have to teach him not to kill because there's no possible reason someone would refuse to kill someone else out of principle or idealism. Derp. Like, Zack Snyder's biggest problem is also one of his biggest saving graces. He has a particular philosophy on movies. He's a Randian objectivist. That's why he's good at, at um, writing a character like Rorschach and making movies like Watchmen. He's good at the deconstruction because he understands the need to rationalize morality. But with a character like Superman, he is entirely motivated by empathy, principle, and idealism. So making him need to learn not to kill is bullshit. And um, Kevin Cosner's Pa Kent going... Well, maybe you should have just let them all die is also bullshit. And aside from the philosophical issues and the character issues and everything else, it's a dull, bleak, bland, boring slog of a thing. And it it does one of the biggest sins, in my opinion, which is it tells its story out of order for no freaking reason other than, ooh, look how artsy I am telling my story out of order. It's It's very... It's technically proficient, but it's dull. It's very much like a lot of Christopher Nolan movies. And I know Christopher Nolan wasn't directly involved with this one, but Zack Snyder was essentially trying to mimic Christopher Nolan, and it was it's it's just bad. So that's that's my two cents on Man of Steel. It's it's just bad. And I don't even like Superman all that much, but I know enough about Superman to know that it doesn't serve Superman well at all. All righty. Uh, let's see. Zach said, "Good." What did you put it at? I, 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 I said it. I, I said it was bad, and I'm beginning to second guess myself and say it's awful. Oh, okay. You want it as awful? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. What do I think? Uh, there were some scenes I loved in this movie because we got to see Superman as Superman. Um, but there were a whole bunch of scenes where I thought that's not Superman, though. And I get it. We're seeing a young uh, Superman, so he's not who he is or who he's going to become. Overall, though, uh, I would I'd say it was good. I enjoyed it, and I, it grows on me as we go. But of the three takes, the three live-action takes of Superman uh, on the big screen, this is probably... I, I, I like Henry Cavill in, in the role. It's just I've got to give the movie... An average. I think I talked myself down too. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but there you go. Uh, let's see. Zach says good. And uh, let's see. Uh, B with an experienced viewer says Crona not. Uh, Henry Cavill's awesome Superman. I kind of agree with it. Uh, Man of Steel is awful, says Austin P. Uh, Brightburn says Crona not. Uh, MOS uh, B, I misunderstood in my opinion, hated that he killed Zod. That was inappropriate. I understand, though, because he was like, I'll never stop. I mean, he could have, what, knocked him out? Put his went. hand in front of Zod's eyes so that... Oh, no, no, no. But that's just him. one. What does he do after that? Hold him there forever and ever and ever, I'm in? As soon as he lets go, Zod flies off and tries to kill somebody else. There's no time after what he's got that Zod would have said... Okay, I'm stopping now. Okay, well, here, here's an option. Paralyze him instead of killing him. It, it's harsh, but it at least prevents him continuing and it leaves him like alive. If he, if he heat, well, uh, if he tried to heat vision through his back, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do. Um, Sometimes there is a certain situation, like if you're fighting a much bigger person. Unfortunately, you don't have the luxury of knocking him out because that's going to take too long. Killing him is easier. Um, and don't ask me how I know that. Okay. Uh, MOS is uh, great. He should he should have pulled a bane and been like, "I'm gonna break you." Is what he should have done. Uh, puts a nice, more realistic touch to how Superman would actually be received. All right, that's pretty cool. MOS gets a large D from Jim Sorensen. And a bad from Joe Rogers, which is essentially the same grade. 
Uh, Man of Steel is great, says Evil Black Cat. Sequel failed to move on from the emo Superman and make him grow, but Man of Steel is a solid 810, okay? Uh, and he said, uh, great. It is average movie. It's a saving grace, as Henry Cavill says Ahsoka, and that is a big saving grace. All right. Man of Steel is average, uh, said Frog, and uh, low B, high C. All righty. Uh, do, 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 do. I hate Man of Steel. This is not Superman. I can't stand any of the Snyderverse films, says Omar. So awful. Uh, Man of Steel is awful, says JP Fawn. All right. And for everything that Dalton said, phallic spaceships off. Oh, yeah, that was kind of funny. All right. Rorschach is based, but also objectivism is juvenile, the immature way of looking at the world. That's why I hate Dr. Manhattan, not Rorschach. Also, Ozymandias needed to die. Uh, oof, I like Henry Cavill as Superman, but the movie is not memorable, not good. Um, okay. Uh, Man of Steel is not a Superman movie, therefore bad. And then we have, uh, to do, to do, there is nothing good about Man of Steel, says Austin P. And thank you very much, Rhaegar, who says, uh, Man of Steel is the best DC film ever made. It is iconic. All righty. Um, there we go. And uh, let's see, do 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 bull crap. Uh, so iconic for me. Let's see, Cavill is as good as Superman, however, the script didn't help out at all. And there we go. Okay, um, looks like that is it for the votes. So, uh, do 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 okay. Uh, what we got here is all across the board. <laughs> We've got three iconics. We've got our good greats. We've got let me change that word up here too. So I stop reading it off. We got three greats. And we have uh three goods and we have three averages, but we have four bads and we have four awfuls. So I'm thinking Man of Steel lands right in the average category. Yep. That that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Next up, I don't even remember this movie enough. I can tell you I had a good time with it because that's what that's the feeling I get when I think of it. But both of these movies, I'm going to save some time and just say both of these movies are average to me because I could tell you I remember had a good I had a good time with it and I do tend to remember that John Malkovich played a crazy guy, but I don't remember anything after that so what, what about what, you what franchise red and yeah this one's red too but red is right after it so i i mean i enjoyed red to the tiniest bit more because it had mm -hmm. anthony hopkins playing an evil crazy guy in it and that's yeah. always fun but um yeah they're they're just they're average I, next yeah, I, uh, uh red two is average red is good says comic book frog all right. Uh, I almost forgot about red. Red is good, I thought, says MK. All right. Uh, but we're on red, too, actually, right now. But if you want to do both of them at the same time, I don't I don't mind. They're fairly indistinguishable from each other. I don't think anyone's going to blame you. Uh, I loved red. Omar, would that be a good, then? Both reds are good, says Zach. Uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 Omar, uh, let's see, haven't seen red. Yeah, I like both of them equal. So, red two, uh, same, same, and that would be good. Okay. And, uh, let's see, do, 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 red is B, red two is average, says Jim. Uh, uh no, Mr. DC Comics Unbreakable is not a DC movie. That is something completely yep. the, uh, Unbreakable trilogy is completely. Helen Mirren is easy on the eyes, and Morgan Freeman in the first movie was cool, says Zach. Alrighty, average for Red Two, good for the first one, says Omar. Okay, average and good. Okay, uh, wow. Um, the thing is, is these two are mirroring mirroring each other, uh, almost. I mean, like literally, just flip it. Uh, so we have. Red, or, or red two, going to average, and we have uh, red going to good. All right. Okay. That's so. Next that's up, fun. kids. 
we have the return of Swamp Thing featuring <laughs> two of the most silly side character kids of all time because they got this crazy Swamp People talk. Uh, that's all I remember of this. That and they had that fruit eating sex scene in it. Um, I This is a bad movie. This is just this bad. Yeah, no, it's an enjoyable bad movie, but it's bad. <laughs> It, it was bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely putting it bad, though. Uh, and you would say bad as well? I, I would say bad. I think I had a little bit more fun with it okay, than let you me, did. Let, but... me put in, let me put in Return of Swamp Thing for the vote thing. Um, uh, swamp Thing. All right. There we go. Okay, so uh, I do get a uh, a minus in today's writing market, C plus in experience of viewers' eyes. Don't get me started on the Unbreakable trilogy. That's a roller coaster ride. Uh, so we got uh, Rhaegar. You can bet Zach has seen. Okay, uh, let's see. Jim says very bad. So okay, they put that there. And Frog says bad. <laughs> All right. Okay, and I don't know how many votes we're going to get on this. This was like 1990. And it wasn't even popular back then. By that, I mean it wasn't even released on a whole bunch of th screens. It wasn't exactly... It, it, was, it was basically all but a direct-to-video movie, and it, it showed. Yeah. Well, even Swamp Thing, it, you know, we knew it because it was one of the first HBO movies, but it didn't exactly fire up the box office. Again, it's another one of those look-how-far-we've-come-as-a-genre-type movies. Yeah, uh, it was an 89 Chrononaut. Um, yeah, this was the sequel to Swamp Thing. Not the, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, Joe Rogers says, good. It's a uh, fun movie that doesn't take itself too serious. They're trying to Swamp Thing so bad that it's good, bad, says JP Fawn. All righty. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, average for Swampy, says MK. Never seen it, so not voting, says Rhaegar. And in the end, we've got one awful, four bad, one and one. This is a bad movie. <laughs> uh, we're gonna I'd love for it is a bad movie. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Road to Perdition. Tom Hanks playing a gangster. Uh, Daniel Craig is the gangster's son who um, kills Tom Hanks' son. So Tom Hanks... Uh, goes on trying to hurt the uh, head of the mob played by Paul Newman. And he does so by robbing banks and uh, taking people out. He is known as the death dealer or something along those lines, because if he shows up, he's the one that's going to win the fight. A lot of people had a hard time seeing Tom Hanks in this role. I looked at it and I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Uh, and it did actually have him spread his wings. Um, I love this film. This is a great movie to me. How about you? Um, it's been a while since I've seen it, but your summary made me remember some of it. Um, I would say it's good. Um, I will okay, say, it's put, not, yeah, I'll, I'll put the title up. It it it's not my it's not my kind of it's not my kind of movie, so that might be coloring it a little bit. But I definitely think it's good. I don't think it's okay. great though. All righty, and there you go. I put the title in, so vote after that. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, it had a, a darkness to it. And by the way, at the time, I really prided myself on my sound system that I had been able to put together. Mm -hmm. And the scene in the rain when he finally, when that whole thing, it just kind of goes quiet a lot. And to me, to me, sometimes silence is as powerful as any soundtrack or anything like that. And I love, like, uh, I, I feel the same way about Mission Impossible, the first mm -hmm. one where he has to be really quiet and he falls through the roof the whole nine yards. Um, it, mm -hmm. it just, I love that film. I, I really do like uh, Roger the, the, the tension of a pregnant silence is very, very yes. useful. Uh, Jay agrees with me. And says it's an A. Uh, I haven't seen it, but it sounds good. Check it out. I hope you like it as much as I do. And if you guys watch any of these movies, you've never seen them, come back here. Let us know how it is. Let us know how you liked it. I hope you enjoy the movies that uh, that we enjoy. And I hope you feel this hatred for the movies that we hate. 
Uh, but yeah, there you go. Um, hmm. I didn't know this was a DC film. I liked it. Says MK, where would you put it? Like what, what rating would you give it? I didn't see it, says Jim Sorensen. Perdition is an A, says Osaka. All righty. Uh, this one ranks really high on my list. It was great, says JP Fawn. Um, it was meh, a.k.a. it's there. I uh, couldn't hold my interest. Uh, average, says Comic Book Frog. All righty. And right now we have four uh, greats. Four greats for Road to Perdition. One good and one average pregnant silence is not a phrase i thought i would learn today <laughs> you, you've never you've never heard the expression of a, a pregnant, pregnant silence pause. or a pregnant it, pause yeah pregnant pause is usually the the way it's put but yeah it's like uh you i, I give it a good says mk you can feel the tension you can feel it right you know yeah um so we've got four two and one and so we have three on one side. Uh, I gotta say, I want to put it in. I want to put it in, uh, in the great category because I think it is. But you almost have the same amount that's not in the great category than you do that is in the great category. So I gotta put it in good. What do you think? I I, I mean I think that's fair. I my biggest problem is I just don't remember it enough. And yeah. it's not the kind of movie that I normally go for. So I can't really weigh in on it beyond the fact that I thought it was good. All righty. Uh, next up, Shazam! You want to talk a little bit about this Christmas movie? Yes, it, it should have been released at Christmas is what it should have yeah, been know, done. Right? Not, not right in the middle of the, you know, the, the aforementioned pregnant pause between the Infinity Sagas and Captain Marvel. Um... But this movie is so good. It 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 gave it expanded the magical side of the DC universe more in one movie than any of what Endgame tried to like. I I always say this, but Shazam gave me the Shazam family, the Seven Deadly Sins, and Mister Mind in one movie. Endgame didn't even give me a single freaking Celestial, even though Celestials had been set up before this. So I really, I really like um, Shazam. That being said, I can't say it's iconic. I have to say it's good. It's not great. It's good. But it's, it's a very enjoyable good. Boot to the head. It's great. And I'll tell you why. Uh, once again, kind of like Black, uh, Black Adam, it has no pretension. It is. It has none of the woke crap. It's absolutely fun. This is pure fun. It tells a good story too, and it actually makes characters out of the characters. These are the family, by the way, who are introduced as here's character. Here, here is a character. Here's character. Here's character. Uh, now, granted, they can't give everybody time, but the ones that they did, they fully fleshed out, and they—I uh, thought that was really good. I love okay, the family. You know what, dynamic. Hold on, uh, uh, let me uh, finish my, and then I'll. Uh, um, I love the family dynamic, and that led into me caring about what happened to them when they were doing the superheroics. Uh, go on ahead. Okay, you're you're actually convincing me, and I did remember one thing that does elevate this movie for me. And that is Mr. Freddie Friedman, because I hate Freddie Friedman in the comics because he has no character. Freddie Friedman in the movies, however, He's is a geek-loving, cynical jackass who also happens to be disabled. And wouldn't you go right ahead and know it? That's something I can actually relate to. Freddie, uh, Freddie Friedman in the comics was always kind of super-powered Tiny Tim, and I hate the Tiny Tim archetype. As Gee, someone who why? actually has disabled, <laughs> so but so yeah, I I'm gonna I'm gonna up it one, uh, Alrighty. vector to the great because Freddie Friedman is a likable character in the movie, whereas he was not a character in the books. Now we did get a super chat. Thank you very much to Rhaegar for the super chat, saying, "Why is Mister Mind important? I have no idea who it is. Mister Mind is the little worm. You actually see him at the beginning and end of the Shazam movie." Um, he was uh, central to one of the more iconic uh, Captain Marvel stories and uh, the Monster Men. 
uh, Monster Men of Evil. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I've got it. Or Captain Marvel and the Monster Men. I've got it over here somewhere. Um, it's retold, by the way, through uh, with uh, the guy, Jeff Smith. Loved it. You see a little bit um, when they're going through all the doors at the end of this movie and they run into a whole bunch of alligators. They were part of it. And uh, there's, it's just so, this movie is so much more than what it actually seems. Uh, it's also, enjoyable. Yeah, also, uh, what's his name as uh, Savannah? Freaking inspired casting. Mark Strong. Thank you. Again. Okay, uh, so I gave it a great, you gave it a great. Shazam uh, is great, says Zach. Uh, life is like a drum of bullets. You never know when you need to ice them off, oh, says Kern and I. Good, says Comic Book Frog, and Joe Rogers agrees with him. All righty, and then Shazam was great, says Jim Sorensen. Uh, let's see what else. Shazam is uh, top tier, average, bottom tier, good, um, good, says Ed Brewer. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Shazam is great fun, Jay Lucent says with an A. Shazam is great. The real cat Marvel delivered, and it was just a fun time, says MK. With that said, I predict Black Adam will be equally as good, says Rhaegar. I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Shazam is a B. I, I, it it sh should have been released at Christmas, expanded more. I think it would have been a bigger hit at Christmas time, too. It also would have been a bigger hit if it didn't come out literally in the middle of all the other bigger Captain comic Marvel, movies. It came out between Captain Marvel and Endgame. It was doomed. Um, yeah. it, it's like Warner Brothers decided that's the time they're going to play Big Dick. And no, there was no dick bigger than Yeah, Endgame. no. <laughs> you... You, you bet everything on 22 black and 22 is a red number. Yep. Uh, uh, JP Fawn says that Shazam is good. Uh, great compared to writer's room of most movies today. It must be silenced, says Corona All right. And uh, let's see. Uh, Shazam is bad. They made Billy an angsty teen, Cap Marvel, a cringe child character, cringe humor. And very jarring, almost uh, R-rated scenes with Seven Deadly Sins. Austin, how, I'm, I'm very curious. Um, and this is not a challenge on any way, shape, or form. I've actually heard a lot of these arguments before. How old are you, though, is what I would like to know. Um, why is Mr. Mind important? I have no idea. Oh, I already answered that. Okay, E has convinced me to go great, says Ahsoka. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, it is a very wholesome movie, which makes me want to elevate it to an A. However, I forget uh, the movie shortly after watching it, so it's still a B, says Rhaegar. All righty. Um, uh, I'd, I'd have to watch Shazam again to consider it for great. Mr. Mind rivals Batman as the most dangerous person in the DC universe, says Joe Rogers. Monster yes. Society of Evil. Thank you, Jim. Uh, DC is exceeding with villains, Suicide Squad, Black Adam, Joker, so forth. I think it's funny. Somebody said it was cringe, says Rhaegar. In my early 20s. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking that in all honesty. Um, the comedy doesn't like always hit, there, but I'm oh, glad that it's there is where I'm at. Well, no, the reason, the reason why I was, I was bringing it up is um, it, it's kind of a generational thing. We had kid shows like The Lady in White and uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. We had some serious horror films aimed at kids mm -hmm. you know they didn't uh it they, it happened somewhere in the 90s where g kind of fell away and they went to pg but then all of a sudden pg had to be saccharine sweet yeah pg is just g with occasionally yeah. naughty but language. then it changed to nothing so we were we were getting pg movies when we were kids with boobs and blood in them that were so, harder than most PG 13 so movies. A lot are of now, the yeah. stuff like Austin brought up, Oh, it's an almost R rating scene. That scene wouldn't have even be considered PG back in the eighties. So that's what I was curious. That's why I was curious about his age, because I think if you get uh, like at about 96, 97, if you're born around then and later, you're probably thinking a lot worse towards violence and nudity and all that kind of stuff than we were. Um, yeah, 16, I guess my I guess, my, I, guess I was is an is an iconic film for the 80s and it's got a completely gratuitous breast scene in it. And mm -hmm. uh and um 
what was it? I can't believe they fucking forgot my birthday. And she shuts the door. I can't believe my grandpa felt me up. You know, it's that there, it's just, we expected, we or, or at least we just were used to different things. They, I, I, they just trusted us to yeah, I, take it a lot I guess more. my, I, I guess my, my year was the last year for that because I was born in 95 and none of that, none of this bothered me. I, but then again, I also grew up on a lot of like the eighties and nine and earlier nineties stuff. So maybe it's just a matter of I'm quote unquote, an old soul. So my tendencies more, lean more towards the older generation than the younger, but whatever that happens. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't doubt that I, I attract a certain amount be, being an older person myself, that if I do attract 20 year old viewer viewers, it's people with more of an older mindset than it would be um, going over to who are, who are the young bucks doing this kind of stuff? Um, I guess what, like Professor Thorgy or something, or Comics Explained has like two. Hey, yeah, movies. the new the new rock yeah. stars is the Council of Geeks. The yeah, the the heavy. I, oh, here you go. I say rated R things so uh, because I don't like rated R things. Okay, hey, that's cool. Like I said, everybody, you know, you like what you like. You don't like what you don't like. Like I said, I wasn't challenging. I was just wondering about that. But uh, oh, Soka is saying I'm in my twenties and I still like these kind of things. So yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Ahsoka. I'm 27, and I still like these stuff, these type of things. All righty. Uh, well, okay. So what we got was seven greats and five goods. So is that enough to drag it down to good? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> Too bad. Uh, and 40 minutes later, yeah. Well, you know, that's the fun of these to actually have the uh, conversation, have the discussion. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna... even if it does take six hours. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna wheel that down to awful, and then I'm gonna type in S T E E L. <laughs> okay, kids, um, did you ever see Steel? I did. Um, I I kind of wish I didn't, um, because it's bad. It's very very bad. Um, can can we just can can we just put it to the bottom and be done? with it i'm gonna put awful um but here's the thing i actually a lot of people like oh shack is steel and i was like um who oh that guy from blue chips yeah actually no we, he was orlando magic was a new team i knew all about shack but there's an actress in it called irma p hall who um had been nominated for an oscar she was in lady killers she was in soul food i actually liked her as an actress she was in this and she's the best thing about it this movie is so fudging horrible. Um, it's the only thing that gives Birds of Prey a run for its money, I'm thinking. It's it's just bad. It's god-awful horrible. Uh, so, yeah, I go horrible on it as well. Uh, Joe Rogers, let's see. A comic Book Frog says it's bad. Steel equals no. Not even a vote. It's just no. Says Jay <laughs> I, I think that um, I think that's awful. But Steel is iconic by, because meme says Rhaegar. Steel is very bad, but not awful, says Ahsoka. All righty. Uh, let's see. R used to be heavy violence and nudity. Now they get an R due to more than three F words. I know, right? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Steel gets a D. That's bad. Uh, those critics who think The Rock is a horrible actor should watch Steel and get back to us. Yeah, Steel is. Yeah, awful. there's yeah. that. Uh, let's see. Bad, but I like Shaq, says Joe. Alrighty. Uh Steel is forgettable. Anything Shaq did was awful, says JP Fawn. Wait, you didn't like Kazam? Not Shazam. Kazam. Never seen Soul Food, but that is a chick flick. But that Irma chick is good looking. Uh well, she was 90. I think you're looking at someone else. <laughs> uh Shaq is a horrible live actor. Yeah, not that good. Okay, so the, right the question, now. The question is which of which of them is worse, Shaq or Hulk Hogan? I think Hulk Hogan might be worse. What was that babysitter movie he was in? <laughs> I I don't remember. All I can remember is the movie where where he played opposite Christopher Lloyd and Christopher Lloyd yeah, got frozen. Yeah, isn't that the same one? I got frozen today. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, so we've got five awfuls and four bads so does that drag down to awful or I, is that enough to lift it up to bad no it's bad 
it, it's awful. It's it, it is the lowest of the low. Goodbye, sir. Mr. Nanny. That's it. That's it. Okay, so uh, next up. Steel has rusted. Goodbye. We have Suicide Squad. Not the Suicide Squad. This is the first one. The the one from 2017. Not, not the awesome one by James Gunn. Well, what did you think of the first Suicide Squad, really? Um... It's a lot more fun than something like BVS or Man of Steel, but don't ask people whose, whose main jobs are making music videos and trailers to make a movie. It, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a jumbled, technically incoherent mess, and it's, an, it's obviously trying to be DC's Guardians of the Galaxy, but it all it succeeds in being is a terrible, terrible off-brand parody of what the Guardians might have been if it hadn't been good. So okay. I'm, I'm saying bad just because I don't think it's awful because mm -hmm. it does have the fun factor, but it's bad. I'm going in a different direction. I went and saw this with my wife, and we had a good time in it. I also watch it on occasion because it is a stupid, fun film. And I enjoy it. So I actually will put it at good myself. I don't think this is, this is a leave your brain at the door fun action film. Um, think about it for far too long. Yeah, it falls apart. If you think about, hey, well, that character would be like, no, nope, it just falls. But it, uh, otherwise, yeah, I find it to be a stupid, fun action film. Com All right, Comic book frog just committed heresy and he deserves a boot to the head. He said that the first one was better than the second one, and you are objectively wrong, sir. Suicide Squad is underrated. It is a B for me, says Jay. Me and him seem to have uh, similar tastes. Steel is like Michael Jackson's song, bad, says Marania. And uh, that would have just cemented it. That it's. It, mm -hmm. um, let's see, E, do you know that uh, you could put the thumbnails on these tier lists as vertical boxes instead of squares? Yeah, actually, I've got it. I had a couple of those. Like Green Lantern, I believe, was one of those. Um, but yeah, I, I do believe. Where did we put the Green Lantern? I, th I thought that was one of those. Huh. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, today, if they made Mr. N let's see. Average, says Joe. All righty. And then uh, Rhaegar, also Suicide Squad 1, was a dumpster juice. So it gets an F. It goes to awful. And I didn't see Suicide Squad probably for the reason most people did, and that was Harley Quinn um, for the same reason most people did watch it. All right. Uh, hold, da, 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 da. Okay, first Suicide Squad is just plain awful. Tries to be DC's Guardians of the Galaxy, but is more like a bad parody. I was really hoping for uh, that as well. Okay, so put it on bad. That is for Ahsoka and good, better than Suicide Squad 2. Disagree, but yeah. everybody's got its opinions. You are wrong. Uh, Suicide Squad 1, I'll give a D, says Jim Sorensen. And then we have, uh, oh, yeah, the worst. This is Katana. She's got my back. Uh, what are we, some kind of Suicide Squad or something? Between good I... and great, says Cronenot. Well, you said good first, so there you go. I'll um, never forgive them for what they did to the Enchantress, if nothing else. I felt first Suicide Squad is bad up to that point. was easily the worst DCEU film, so say what you will about Leto's Joker, but he did get robbed of scenes. Yeah, I know a lot of us want to see that air cut, see if it actually Yeah, but the, the like mad love cut, I think, is what a lot of people are calling it. Yeah. It, was supposed, it was basically supposed to be a Joker Harley movie with the Suicide Squad in it, and then they did what they did to it, so... His powers that he can climb anything. Yeah, now you're, you're kind of convincing me to go down one. But uh, let's see. Not bad. I said awful. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. So what we got here is two bad, three or two awfuls, three bads, one average, and four goods. Bad. Uh, I think it all averages out to it needs to go into the bad category. Here we go. All right, yeah, next up, The Suicide Squad. 
I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you this. I watched it and I enjoyed the freaking hell out of it. This was a comic book movie. This was, like I said, like I said about Shazam, like I said about uh, Black Adam. Um, this is just a lot of fun. It's a comic book movie. They embrace the silliness of it. Uh, the only thing, I, I can't even say I didn't like it. It's just I was affected by it. I was like, no, you don't freaking kill off Rick Flagg. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you did that. Um, but I love the opening scene. Them uh, killing off Boomerang was was a bit, uh, and, I, and it just said, okay, I get why he did that. Because if you saw Captain Boomerang, you would think he would make it to the end because he's one of the originals. They needed to kill off someone like that. Mm -hmm. um, fun. This is pure fun. I I'm putting it in the uh, I put it in the great category. Uh, how about you? Yeah, you're getting a second great vote for me. This let me put I it in the thing as well. I I love I love Suicide Squad too. I love it. If it weren't for the fact that Joker, you know, what what Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is brain crappingly iconic, Suicide Squad 2 would be the best DC cinematic universe movie yet. Period. Okay. But so that being true. said, it's still brain crappingly good, so it is great. All right. All right. So we got two on the great category. Let's see. Well, the Suicide Squad is overrated. Gun style is cringe personified. Not better than the first one. C, says J. Lucian. Uh, People are free Suicide to be wrong. Suicide Squad 2 is great. And uh, Froggy says it was bad. Good, says Chrononaut. Uh, it was good. Great is too strong, says Ed. Uh, SS2 is good, says MK. Ahsoka, I give it a great. And uh, Joe gives it a, I haven't seen it yet. And uh, good from Omar. All righty. So right now we've got four, four, uh, four great, four good, one average, and one bad. Uh, Rhaegar comes in with an F. Okay. And uh, that's where we stand so far. R Rhaegar, you do realize we're talking about the second one, right? Yeah, the second movie. J j just making sure everyone knows, we're talking about Suicide Squad 2, the James Gunn one. That was on HBO Max. Because I, I feel like a lot of people might be grading the uh, first one still. I know that a lot of people didn't go see the second one because of the first one, by the way. It, Which it, is a damn shame because it, yeah, it was amazing balls. By the, time, by the time the second one came out, the reputation of the first one was so bad, it ruined the reputation to be was fair, it was also during COVID, and it was one of the few movies during COVID that passed the uh, century mark. So, <laughs> comic book frog, oh, we are, it's bad. I would give it lower than enough, but I can't, says uh, Rhaegar. Okay, well, what we have here is four greats, four goods, and uh, one average, one bad, and one uh, one suicide squad. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, I just read the title, and one awful. Um, that would bring it to good to me. Yep. Wish it, it wish, it, wish it, wish it, wish it could be, wish it could be higher, but for some reason people didn't like it. But it looks like the uh, the vote stopped. So here we go, and let's move on to one of the campiest, cheesiest, bad DC movies of all time. The first superhero movie starring a woman, and no matter what they say about Captain Marvel, Supergirl. Have it's it's bad. It's it's bad. That it's just it's so bad. Like it's not I I hesitate to say it's awful because I'm trying to look at it in its like the context of its franchise. So it it's it's not a it's not as massive a downgrade to the 70s Superman franchise as it would be to something like a modern movie, but it's it's bad. Alrighty. Um, I am going to send Twiddles over to poop on your head. This movie is awesome. It is a great film. Uh, one of possibly the best comic book movies ever made. Uh, you're talking about Supergirl, correct? Yeah. Have you suffered recent head trauma? 
I, no, no, I'm just would you like with to? You. <laughs> I am I am seriously just screwing around with you. Uh, but the thing is, is I don't I don't think it's as uh, I don't think it's horrible. I kind of I was like 12, by the way, and so all sorts of uh, things came up with this uh, young lady. Um, <laughs> no, anywho, it, yeah, it's it's bad. It's it's bad on every level. It's got bad dialogue. It's got bad special effects. It's got uh, bad acting, bad direction, and yet so easy to watch. Um, it's it's an entertainingly it's an entertaining film. It is so bad. It's and I'm not saying it's so bad. It's good. It's like, how is this possible? That's the way I feel about Supergirl sometimes. Like, how is this movie possible? Because there's nothing I would, nothing in there that I would call good. And and I'm way past the age of horn dogging over Supergirl saying, and that's the reason why I like it. But there's just something about this movie that it, it's it's easy to watch, but it's easy also to recognize everything about it is bad. I don't know. I'd give, give it an average. All righty. Um, let's see. Jay, listen, Supergirl's not off, 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 the Bosica? awful, but it is not good either. Give it a D, a bad. Uh, let's see. Yossipi, okay. Uh, let's see. Good from Comic Book Frog. I haven't seen Supergirl, but uh, of all the DC ones I haven't seen, this is the one I'm most excited to see. Uh, Supergirl is bad. The only good part is Helen Slater, but she can't save this movie, says Marania. All righty. And uh, uh, do Supergirl is iconic. Uh, bad, says Joe Rogers. All righty. Are we imposing age limits on voting here? Uh, no, not that I know of. Uh, let's see. I'll say Supergirl is average, says MK. All righty. And let's see, do, 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 do. Supergirl gets a big D age limits on voting. I don't know. Um, okay, that is bad. And then we've got to uh, do, 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 do Helen Slater nor Faye Dunaway could have saved this film. It was bad, says Ed Brewer. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Not trolling Supergirl is a D. That's bad. All right, Supergirl is just an average film, says Asaka. All right, and uh, let's see. A fun fact, Helen Slater played Lara in Smallville. Yeah, I saw that. Um, let's see, Supergirl was cringe when I saw it, but it is average at best, says J.P. Fawn. All right, good uh, Good for the time, says Crononaut. All right. Uh, let's see. A lot of old bad movies are very watchable, says Joe Rogers. Yeah, I, I, I think so. This All is right. True. Um, let's see. We've got seven bads, four averages, and two goods. So does that bring? Is that enough to bring? Um, no, I think Supergirl I think it's bad. Average. Is is that enough to bring Supergirl to average? You you say no. The seven versus. Uh, six keeps it. You, you think it's still well, okay. It. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it jumps it up to average. I think so. But it's uh, Helen Slater is still hot. Yeah. She's, she's pretty lady. It is good for the time, but bad today. So it, it's average. Uh, says us. Okay. All right. We'll plop it to average. All righty. Uh, next up Superman two. Um, Okay, so I was there uh, in the theaters when it first came out, and I was there when it got re-released, and I was there when it got re-released again, and I will always show... Man, you know what? Why can't we have a revival of Superman and Superman 2? You know, that would be awesome. Uh, okay, there's a lot of stuff as a comic book fan to not like about this movie because he throws a shield... Uh, they have lasers and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of not Superman powers and stuff, but this is a very Superman, Superman movie. And I still, I got to say, there were a couple of things that they did that just wowed me. They put a bus on a crane, flipped it and made it look like they threw a freaking bus. Um, and I get it. There's some miniature work or something. I mean, it, it, it slams into a full size grown man. The special effects are amazing in this. The action was good. The story was good. I'm going to, uh, I, I got to say, I put it at great. What about you there? Uh, 
Dalton. Um, I guess I'm counterbalancing oh, it a little bit. I, I gotta I put, put in the uh, the Superman too. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I I put it I put it in average. It's very good. It's very good for the time, but at the same time, it's very good for the time. Okay. And we and the genre has moved on and grown up and gotten better. That being said, it's still one of the better adaptations of Superman, but that's just a factor of the fact that people just don't seem to know how to write Superman correctly. Um, and I can only and I can only extend my leniency as far as that goes so far. So I put it in average. You're adopted. No. No, I assure you, my mother is my mother. After 42 years, says Jay, Superman 2 is still my favorite movie of all time. Neil! Before the S icon of Superman. A uh, great movie. Watch the Donner Cut, says Comic Book Frog. You know what? I'm one of the few people I know that actually prefer the, the movie, the, the theatrical version than the Donner Cut. But I'm not going to take it away because I, I love the Donner Cut too. I just like the uh, theatrical version a little bit better. Iconic Superman can coming out of the chamber and bowing before Zod only to crush his hand while the Superman theme kicks in. Always gave me goosebumps, says Omar. All righty. Next up, Joe Rogers says, good. Uh, Superman 2 is good. What's hilarious is Superman kills Zod in that movie. All good. Uh, if you watch the Donner Cut, though, you get the scene at the end where they're walking him out. Take into prison, yeah. Yeah, they don't, they don't have that scene in the theatrical cut. So in the theatrical cut, he kills him. In the uh, Donner cut, they were all taken to prison. Um, Superman 2 is good. It's a perfect Silver Age adaptation, says Austin P. And let's see, Marania says, voting again, Superman 2 is good. All righty. Superman 2 is great, says Osaka. And uh, I used to think people were calling it the Dahmer cut, so be. <laughs> All righty. Uh, which do you like better, Donner? Theatrical. I like the theatrical cut a little bit better. Um, let's see. Soups versus wholesome soups. Oh, freaking wholesome. Every day of the week. Superman does not kill Zod in the Donner cut. He, run, he rewinds time. Now, that's the first movie. This is Superman 2. Superman 2 is iconic, says Jim Sorensen. All righty. And we have uh, to, to do good from Chrononaut. All righty. And uh, Superman didn't kill Zod. He just threw him down a bottomless pit. All right. Well, here's what we got, kids. We've got five for great. We've got one for average and six for good. So I think overall this lands in the good category. Yep, that makes sense. Which brings us to Superman 3. Is um, bad. You, you put it in the bad category? It, it the the latter Superman right sequels up, slowly got worse, and I would say that, that the first two were only average, so I have to put Superman 3 in bad. It's an enjoyable bad, but it's bad. Oh, well, I'll take your word for it, uh, Vank, because I haven't seen the Donner Cut in forever. So um, there we go. So, ah, uh, goodness, it's bad. Superman 3, you put bad? Yep. All right. And, um, well, I'm going to go average. When I was a kid, I loved this movie. The humor and everything, it, it like, nails that 13-year-old uh, it, it really did, uh, like that th 13 year old sense of humor. Um, yeah, let me not say it nails the 13 year old. Let, uh, let me finish the sentence. I just, I just enjoyed it a lot more as I grew up. Of course, the humor in it is a little bit too much. Um, especially at the beginning, the opening credits, it reminds me of the great Muppet caper. Hmm. Um, there's there's some good in it, and I'll tell you one of the greatest scenes in comic book history is the Clark Kent Superman fight in the in the uh, junkyard. So yeah, I, I can't say it's bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my average grade on this one. All right, Superman three is a is a bad Superman movie, but it's a decent Richard Pryor film, says Jay. All righty, uh, not as good as two, still good, says Ed Brewer. 
All righty. Uh, Superman 3, I think you meant Richard Pryor movie, guest starring Superman. It's bad, says uh, Austin P. Great, says Chrononaut. Uh, Superman 3 was good, says Ahsoka. And uh, I'm going to go against the grain here. Superman 3, I'll say, is good because I liked Reeves' evil Superman and Richard Pryor made it fun. All righty. In all honesty, you're not against the grain considering what's going on. We have four in either the great or good, and we have four in the bad and average. Which, uh, only three in the bad, I guess we should say. Uh, Superman 3 is bad. It was more of a vehicle for Richard Pryor. Okay, so now we're tied. <laughs> that only took one more vote. Um, I have to say that uh, Superman 3 is average at best, says J.P. Fawn. All right. And, uh, oh, C for Superman 3, says Jay Lucen. All righty. Uh, three was bad. Average, it's uh, got a lot of good stuff in it. Bad Superman versus Clark in the Drunkyard. One of the greatest scenes of comic book history. Uh, Rich Pryor was in it, says Rhaegar. Yep, uh, even though Rich Pryor was in it, it's a C. But if Zach says it's bad, you know why. Oh, he's not even on the panel. And uh, you wrote two instead of three. Did I write two instead of three? Yeah, I did, but we're on three. Uh, we already did two. I, I wrote Superman two twice. So, uh, One thing I noticed about uh, the Chris Reeves Superman movies is that it has one sexy side villain in each. Yep. Miss Tessmacher, uh, Valerie Perrine, was um, kind of easy on the eyes. Yeah. What I do like about Superman 3 is Lana Lang. Yeah, that whole Smallville scene was pretty cool. And it had some Silver Age silliness, like he freezes a lake and then carries it by holding one side, like it wouldn't just crush off its own weight and everything. That's one of the reasons why I don't like the well actuallys. Well, actually, he won't be able to do that because it will just break on the other. We get it. It's a comic book movie. Can we let it lie for a second? Uh, Zach, is this anti-Kryptonian? What? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let's tally it up. We have one great, three goods, four average, and five bad. Uh, I think, I think it winds up in the average. It's got four either good or higher. It's got four average, and it's got five bad. I think average. Yeah, I think you're right about the average a bit. Okay. Boom. Next up, let me put this in properly here. We have... <laughs> Superman 4, the quest for peace. This movie sucks. <laughs> I know. I It's look, bad. <laughs> it's fun to watch it for how bad it is. It is not so bad it's good. But it's fun to watch how much of a train wreck this was. I do believe Christopher Reeve directed this film, but they cut the budget so horribly bad this is what he gets. A lot of times you get the same flying shot over and over again. This, I yeah. think this was studio ruined. Nuclear man is enjoyable, but it's, it's bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, but it, it is an awful film in my opinion. No, I'm going to go bad because it is, it's not so, it's, it, it, there's an enjoyability to watching it so I'm it's also a propaganda yeah. piece and i hate oh, propaganda definitely. pieces so but, like oh you know I, it's got john crier doing his whole oh, oh so that, yeah okay whatever that is superman 4 is god awful uh f uh mark pillow never acted again so okay so uh, awful from jay uh bad from joe uh superman 4 is awful from jp and uh f because nuclear propaganda says uh Rhaegar, superman 4 is horrible so bad that the majority of superman fans have no idea that this movie even exists it's the part of, by the way this is the first this is the only superman film actually i didn't see in theaters my parents would not uh that they, they they didn't want to go i at the time i didn't have my license so i had nobody to take me to the theater and uh never saw it in theaters all righty. So, uh, well, actually, speculation is he has some power related to a flight abilities that allows it, like a structural integrity field, says Krenonite. 
Um, four is awful, just awful. Lex's nephew, really? He was funny, but it was stupid. What wasn't uh, wasn't Luther's nephew named Lenny? And he was supposed to be a riff off of Lenny from Up Mice and Men. Uh, John Cryer de definitely played Lex better than he did Lenny. Uh, four was awful, says Jim Sorensen. And let's see, Superman 4 is better than Superman 3, but it's still bad, says Austin P. Let's see, it's so bad that Superman got hurt after the movie Superman 4. Oh, oh, too late. Too late to tell that joke. Ouch. Uh, hey, Chrononaut, Superman 4. Uh, Superman 4, I read Reeves' idea for the anti-war uh, stuff. Bad, uh, worst of his films, easily Nuclear Man was funny. Felt like a cross between a... Uh, WWE 80s and heavy metal rocker. He didn't direct, but he came up with a Santa. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is what we've got. We've got five bad. We've got seven awful. Is five bad enough to raise it to average or, or bad, I mean, or do we keep it in awful? Um, I'm willing to change my vote to awful, so. <laughs> Just to keep it in awful? <laughs> well, well, no, it, I, was on the, I was on the fence between bad and awful, so. Awful is fine. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we'll put it there. Um, this is a movie that I I know a lot of people liked when it came out and quickly didn't like, and that is Superman Returns. I, I enjoyed like it. it, but when I got home, I was like, yeah, the super scenes were better on the big screen, but it's slow. What do you think? I like it fine. It has the problem of not of trying to figure out whether it wants to be a reboot or a continuation, and mm -hmm. they would have been better off just doing a reboot. They they mm -hmm. tried to they tried to split hairs between it being a reboot and being a continuation, and it it ruined everything. Um, I would put it in average. I think. Okay, I'm gonna go one up. Uh, this was, I, I, I got to tell you, I did like the super scenes. Uh, I liked Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. I think his plan was stupid, and I don't think they actually thought up in the, uh, but there were a lot of scenes that could not have been done until that moment. And I, I also liked, really liked Brandon Ralph as Superman. It's a shame he didn't get yeah, a, a better movie to be Superman in. <laughs> so uh, we got one good, we got one average. Jay is saying Superman Returns was a huge disappointment. Singer was clueless, a sullen and dull Lois Lane. Seriously, the kid was dumb too. D, very bad and boring movie. All righty. Uh, let's see. You haven't seen Superman Returns yet, says Austin. Returns was okay. Average, says uh, says Ed Brewer. And uh, Joe says average. I like the guy as Superman, though. All right. Uh, and that was Joe Rogers. Return was average, says Ahsoka. And Superman Returns is average. I fell asleep in the movie three times in the same place twice in the theaters, once at home. <laughs> Jim Sorensen says it's average. Uh, great opening until you see how they messed up the relationship between Lois Lane and Superman. It's awful, says the frog. All righty. Uh, Superman Returns was a lost opportunity. D, says Rhaegar. All right. Uh, the writing was the reason it failed. Returns was bad for me, says MK. I don't mind Brandon Superman as he did good in uh, in Crisis, but the plot made no sense. Stalker Superman and stupid to chase Lex without being careful made me shake my head. And uh, Cronaut says average because Cyclops versus Francis Underwood was a good idea, but uh, where were the legends? All right. Gotcha. So, this is where we stand. We only have one good. And then we had uh, seven average. But we had three bad and one awful. I don't think uh, it, it basically breaks it down. I, I cancel out the awful, so it's three bad. Does that lower the seven average? I, I would say no and drop this in average. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd say it stays in average. All righty, next up, we have the iconically great Superman movie from 1978. Average. It was, the it was the first attempt to make a major superhero blockbuster. 
but it was also the 70s. Do you get this guy? <laughs> what the honest f are you talking about? No, please explain it, to me it, it, what only drugs get, you're on and it, why you decided to do them while reviewing this movie. It only gets so much credit for actually writing Superman correctly. There's o there's only so much I can there's only so much I can suspend my well it's the first well yeah it's the first which means we've had fifty years to improve on it and we have so it's average. I don't I don't even know who you are anymore. Um, this movie is awesome. It still holds up. Yes, the blue screen is blue screen, but or the green screen at this point, because he was wearing blue. Those those practical effects still hold up, guys. I still, it just still does it for me. The story is good. The characters are fleshed out. They're made into real people. And yes, we do get the iconic scene that shuts, or should have shut, everybody down who said, man, it's just a pair of glasses. No, it's more than that. Watch that scene and know. But even beyond that scene, the stuff before it, when he first makes his appearance and he does all the stops the crime, the, stops the robbery, saves the cat from a tree, he stops the uh, the jewelry thief. All of that is freaking great. The relationship between uh, Lois and Clark, Superman and uh, Lois, is done very well. This is an iconic film, and we that doesn't even bring in. Uh, Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor. Yes, he said he didn't want to be bald, so he was only bald in one. But Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor is freaking on point. There is there's not a bad moment in this movie. The worst moment you could say, and it's still not bad, is the Can You Read My Mind scene. And thank God they didn't go along with her singing it, which is the original plan. All right, let's see what we get here. Uh, Superman is King of Kings, superheroes. The movie is an S says J and uh comic book frog says it's great. Superman is immediately great. Says Austin P. Uh, let's see. Austin says Dominic is wrong. I think he is calling you Dominic there, dude. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I think people don't know me very well. Which uh, I don't know you now either. Oh, well. If anyone votes, the first Superman movie is less than iconic. They can, they have brain damage. It's been 50 years. You're not that old. Uh, England teens like, oh, no, he didn't. No, you didn't. I did. You didn't. It, okay. It, um, it, it's the baseline of the genre, but that means it's also the baseline of the genre, as in basic. See, no. No, it's not the baseline. It's the high fucking bar. No, that's no, it, it really isn't. When that, that movie means... came, when that movie came out, it said you need to be at least this tall to ride. And there have been a whole shit ton of movies that haven't made that freaking height limit. All right, so, but there uh, also have been many that have exceeded it and make this movie look a little by says comparison. You called it iconic, so you have to vote it. I voted it as iconic. Uh, original Superman movie always has a place in my heart. It is great, says Ed Brewer. All righty. Uh, let's see. People born in 1995 are average. <laughs> uh, iconic, says Omar. All righty. Um, let's see. The first Superman is iconic no matter what era it was made in, says uh, J.P. Fawn. Great. The 1970s are iconic, but uh, not as great as the 80s, says Jim Rogers. All righty. Superman is a classic and uh, great. Only remote complaint uh, I could think of is 45 minutes for something to kick off. I don't – I well, you – in the beginning, you had the destruction of Krypton, and then you had character. But I like the origin story. Great movie, and the ending is emotional, says uh, MK. Dalton hates Kryptonians. Um, and children and old people and puppies, by the way, also. Uh, Marania says, first Superman movie established iconic characters properly. It beats every, t and I mean every Superman movie after. Uh, after yeah, but movie. think about how low that bar is. I want to come on panel and step on Dalton's hat for his awful opinion of this fantastic movie. <laughs> uh, Jim says it was good, but two was better. Um, exactly. And I, made in the and I voted thing. two as average. So it's in the same company as the first, as the uh, second one. 
the glasses thing has been tested. No one recognized Cavill in Times Square with his billboard in the background. And I think wearing a, t a Superman t-shirt. That's That did actually happen. He is about to go Super Saiyan. <laughs> I posted a picture of myself with no hat and glasses on Twitter. He had no idea it was me. <laughs> but that could be just because I don't recognize too many people anymore. Alzheimer's. All righty. So um, let's see where this might stand. Okay. We had 11 greats and one average. So do you think that brings it down to a good or does it stay at great? <laughs> I guess everyone is blinded by nostalgia and that's fine. <laughs> you know what, Dalton? Never change, man. Every Everybody else is wrong. <laughs> okay, guys. 1978 visual effects, 2022 visual effects. It's not even, look, the, the practical effects in 1978 stand up to some of the freaking modern day CGI that we've been seeing. More to the point, it's story and it's character. That's what drives this movie. We actually give a shit about the people that all this stuff is happening to. And again, what that is, is a place to start from. It's not a bar to it doesn't hold up after 50 freaking years. That's like saying hold... Barbarella is a better Casablanca movie because it's got better special effects. No, the characters were done better. The story was done better in 1940 than it was in 1995. Yeah, but in the case of Superman, that's just because people don't the, know how to write Superman. The baseline for Casablanca movies was in 1940. So yeah, and, they had, default, and no, one has, Barbara, no one has so even attempted better. to remake it because barbed wire be is Casablanca, but no, it doesn't matter the, the age. Anyway, we're on to swamp thing. <laughs> All right. So, uh, look, I saw once again, this is one of the original HBO films. Uh, I didn't even really realize it was a comic book when I was a movie, when I was a kid, it's got everything a kid loves. It's got, uh, action. There's monsters in it. There's fire. There's a lot of fights. There's Adrian Barbeau naked in a lake. There is everything a 10-year-old England teen needed to see at the time. Um, this is just campy fun. I'm not going to say it's a great film. It is not. It's uh, the monsters, including Swamp Thing, or a lot of guys with suits that you can actually see the zippers on. So uh, it is low budget, but damn, it is just, it's a good campy movie, and that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it at good. How about you, Dalton? Um. I, it's hard to say because as a Swamp Thing fan, I have a lot of issues with it because it doesn't really attempt to go into the lore of Swamp oh, Thing very much. Try. Yeah. But, but. Oh, by the way, it was also before Alan Moore. Yeah. And, so but it was that, a straight that, up monster book. Yeah. But that, be, that being said, it is campy fun and it doesn't, it doesn't make me angry. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to put it in average just because okay. there's so many problems with it but i still enjoyed oh, yeah. it so i i get it and and i do i i am probably riding the nostalgia train a little bit on this one i can i can get that. oh so now you see you're riding the nostalgia train interesting are you suggesting that superman is based on nostalgia and not the fact that it's got a great script great acting great everything are yes gonna, yes i am you know what that's its own video that, that's its own freaking video. I love Swamp Thing as a kid. I'll give it a B, says Jay. All right. And uh, Austin P, when 40, year old, uh, when 40 years old, your effects will be look as good, you will not, says Austin P. Swamp Thing is good. Yes, and hopefully yeah, I will okay. have the ability to admit it when that happens. Uh, let's see. Plus, he acts different and changes his voice, too. Uh, green screen to your eyes. Boring. Uh, no, for a second, I propose an alternate reality instead of going with Superman Christopher Reeves. Hal Jordan is Green Lantern Corps. Uh, okay, so Comic Book Frog says average on Swamp Thing. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Anyway, Swamp Thing gets a good for MK. All righty. Uh, because it went in a different direction. Adrian Barboa is hot. Uh, it really didn't. It was a monster book. It was a monster book in the in the beginning. This was before. Um, it was before the Alan Moore stuff. Let's see. Do 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 do. And that was a good. These days, most superhero movies depend on the crutch of CGI. Joe Rogers says good. 
Uh, let's see. It has everything a 37 year old that me likes. <laughs> Adrian Barbeau, that brings it all the way up to average. Good job, Adrian, says Ed. All righty. Uh, Swampy was average, says Jim. And uh, Ostapy, do 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 do. Okay. Uh, Swamp Thing is a fun but forgettable average, says JP Fawn. And uh, Crononaut says average. All righty. So at this point, we are looking six to five on the average side. So this looks like it's going to hit the average column. The swamp thing is average. And that yeah. is fine. But hey, look, I get it because it really is a it's a low budget campy kind of movie. So, uh, yeah, it, it sort of fits there. All right. Next up. I'm, I'm, I've got a little confession here. I got to tell you, I actually, as far as books are concerned, since the very beginning, thought V for Vendetta was better than The Watchmen. Um, that being uh -huh. said, that being said, I also kind of liked the movie. And I know the movie got some crap because at the time it was right after uh, it was right after 9-11 and they had a. Oh, look how beautiful. It was 2006, is. though. It wasn't right after 9-11. It was three years. It, it was three years, though. Um, I like this film. Five, I but I give it. You're right, five. Uh, you're right. Um, so I'm going to give it a good, though. I, I don't think it was great. But, yeah, there was enough here to like. I'm going to give it a good. Um. I do, on the other hand, think that it was great, and I have several reasons why. For as much as V for Vendetta the comic is good, and it is, it's a story about an anarcho-communist terrorist, V, fighting a fascist regime, because Alan Moore is patient zero for yeah. all of the stupid bullshit politics that the world is now confusticated within. The movie, on the other hand, is a classical liberal of the um, Voltairean style or the uh, John Lockean style in the form of V fighting a fascist regime. And V you know, the, the movie is so iconic that I literally watch it every year on November the 5th. And I will say this for just about every American in the audience. For those of us that didn't really have much of an idea who Guy Fox is or was... V for Vendetta almost single-handedly made an entire generation venerate November the 5th and recognize it as a day of freedom fighting and awesomeness. Guy Fox and, is a Green Lantern, wasn't he? Is the blonde hair guy? The bowl cut? I swear to God. But more, more to the point, V for Vendetta is one of those movies that gets more and more and more prescient the further down the totalitarian turnpike we go. And it has John Hurt, Hugo Weaving's best role, full stop, and Stephen Fry in it. And Nettie, Natalie Portman gives one of the best performances of her entire freaking career in this movie. I love V for Vendetta. It is great, and it is iconic. Period. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so you put great. I put good. Austin P says Vendetta is a good movie. I love it. It's better than the comic. You know yes, what's kind of agreed. funny is I actually thought, uh, and it could be just because I'm a raw, raw Amer uh, Reagan American, but I actually thought that the communists were the bad guys in the V for Vendetta when I first read it. I shit you not. Uh, bad, says comic book frog. Bad frog. Bad frog. Uh, v for Vendetta gets an A from Rhaegar and uh, high tier average, an average from uh, Ed Brewer. Okay, we get a great... You could be wrong. <laughs> Rhaegar, and then Average, and then uh, Crononaut says great, and then V is underrated in my opinion. I remember people talking about it as uh, it was trying to send a political message, but I liked it, so good for MK. Uh, although I did find it ironic that they had a gay guy was admiring the Quran. I know, right? Oh, isn't it beautiful? And the words are so beautiful. I'm going to go to a top of building and scream my head off about how I love this religion. Um, or on the way down. Anyway, uh, it's too bad the Swamp Thing series sucked, uh, says Jim. And uh, he's talking in the 90s, I'm sure. Uh, Maranya says, drink. 
LOL. Yeah. The gay dude was in the Quran was kind of funny. Says MK uh, comic book front frog says he's drunk now. Uh, remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I have, but no reason the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Frogs like alcohol. That is truth. Confusticated good scrabble word. Fancy words, fancy words, drink. <laughs> Joe Roger says average. All righty. Uh, do you know that there is a drinking game based around your use of fancy words? Yes, I am fully. I, I think I proposed the drinking game. Dalton is singing music to my ears right now. Says Rhaegar, I have to force myself to finish the movie for a review. Uh, absolutely, Dalton. I actually agree with the Natalie Portman thing. I actually think it's the only good acting she's done. I don't agree with that, but I get it. Natalie it's Portman it's, hot, it's but I certainly like up there in terms of her best acting job. So liberals, am I right? Okay, so what we got is one bad, two average, two good, and four great. I think that brings it down to good. Yeah, I, I would, I, yeah, I, being, I, being fair, I want to, I want to pull rank for this movie. I, I genuinely think it deserves to be in the top tier. What rank do you got? <laughs> You got one. I, you got a save. I get a save. This is my save for, for this list. It, it I belongs know. in the I fire. don't know. It's to, I, I think that was the whole point about it being my channel. I'm going to go somewhere. Around the, wait, what happened to V for Vendetta? Did it fall to the bottom again? <laughs> and now he uh, can't even find the freaking movie. I can't even find the goddamn movie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait. What happened to all of them? Oh, never mind. I'm a dumbass. Okay, where'd it go? Hey, honey. Uh, my wife is just agreeing that I'm a dumbass. She's like, hey, thank you for recognizing it. I've been saying it forever. The the the, inter the internet is listening, Dale, and we all agree with you. How was your day at work, hon? It's all right. Did you find your wallet? Yes, I did. I sent you a message, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, you, you see the shelf there? I put it on top of the DVDs. So, and, it, and then we put the laundry basket in front of it. So, I was, yeah. Okay. All righty, guys. Uh, next. All right, guys. I'm the Black Servant. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Next up is The Watchmen. I know this is a divisive film. I know some people who love it. I know some people who hate it. Um, what about you? There, Dalton. What? What do you like it? Do you hate it? Is it average? This is another one of those movies that I really, really like, and it also uh, unironically benefits from flipping Alan Moore's bass backwards bullshit on his head, okay. because he he wrote Watchmen thinking that Rorschach was the bad guy, and he was a he was appalled that everyone lionized Rorschach, and. And unfortunately for Alan Moore, but fortunately for everyone else, uh, Zack Snyder is a Randian objectivist, which is the same philosophy as Rorschach espouses. So he actually reframed it along with the fandom and made Rorschach the good guy as well he should have always been. So this is yet another one of those ones that's, I'm not going to call it great, but it definitely was ahead of its time. So it's hot. It's high part of good i think okay well i can understand i can understand this because rorschach is about truth and that i think that's one of the reasons why people love the character he, he actually is no compromise you have to put the truth out there whether or not it does good or bad edge your question it's is the what truth. it is yeah and i He's think the that, edgier version of the question as yeah, well yeah i think i think people respond to that um my problem with the Watchmen is this. I think it's good or great, depending on which volume you watch. There's like 15 different volumes of this. Editor just I, cuts, man, I tell you. Editor just cuts. I am the uh I am a proud owner of that big ass box set that has everything in it. So that's the way I watch the Watchmen now. Uh, obviously, yeah. you have your choice. But I've got the one that has the the entire movie, the black uh, black sale cartoon in it, the whole nine. So, so, so for it. you, it's not a question of who watches the Watchmen; it's a question of how, how we watch the Watchmen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing: that's the version I watch all the time. That's the version I'm grading, and I say it's great. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with you, honestly. I I just don't think it's as good as something like V for Vendetta. 
I think you pretend that it is better than Watchmen, but I get it. Okay, it's so, so freaking great. Watchmen is a great translation of the comic. I think so too. A lot of people said it wasn't. I think it's because at the end they didn't do the alien thing. But the yeah, I, mi- I missed the work. telepathic squid. I missed the telepathic squid. Me, Link, um, Kara, and every other weird comic loving I, person. I give the Watchmen an A as well. Says Rhaegar. Alrighty. Uh, Ed Brewer says it's pretty great. Uh, Watchmen was good. Says Jim Sorensen. I haven't watched the Watchmen, and I'm not looking forward to seeing it, but I will one day. Says Austin P. Loved it. Great for me. Plus, I love Dr. Manhattan. I know Uber are nearly up an omnipotent godlike being, but I found him very interesting. Rorschach is cool, too. Uh, he's not a liberal. <laughs> okay. Uh, Frog no, said, I thought Rorschach at the end of the film. I screamed for death. Uh, this movie is bad. All righty. Uh, let's see. Rorschach is based. I remember when this movie came out, I was at the naval base in Coronado, and someone flew over the base with a who watches the Watchmen banner. I found out recently that Howler Mouse is a massive Watchmen fan, says J.P. Fawn. Great, and if you disagree, Nixon's FBI will be speaking with you for <laughs> American activities, says Corona uh, All right. I like the Watchmen, didn't love it, but I liked it, says Trusty Sidekick. Hello to Trusty. Good, says Joe Rogers. And uh, Ultimate Cut is 3.5, and it is still, uh, and is a little too long. Director's Cut is my go-to. I, hey, I get it. Um, let's see. Dr. Manhattan can go to hell and die. Uh, okay. I, I added the end die part. Uh, um, assuming that he can did, die. Did, did Maranya drop on? Like, I didn't see her vote for the last two. Hope everything's okie dokie. She did say drink. Uh, yeah, I think she might, I think she might've gone to bed. It might be getting late. Oh, well, I, hope, I hope she's feeling okay. Uh, Maranya, if you are listening in, I hope you're feeling fine. Chilling, relaxing with the mister. All righty. Uh, let's see. Next, uh, what what did we have? We had uh, five greats, four goods, and one bad. So I think it brings it from great to good. Yep, that I I'm I'm kind of there with it. Like it doesn't take me much convincing to call oh, it great, Ronnie, but it's she also didn't good. Vote. She didn't vote because she didn't see him. Okay. All right. Wow, I did not know that. I thought that would be uh, okay. Would... Yeah, uh, Maranya, watch watch those. I think you'll have a good time. In both cases, yeah, I wonder. I wonder about that. Yeah, once again, if you guys do see the movies, by all means, let us know in the comments uh, what you guys thought of them. The and the fifth of November is good. coming, so if you if you guys want to do a yearly V for Vendetta watch party, just let us know because I will do it again. <laughs> Let's see, Wonder Woman eighty four. Alrighty. Um. Do you want to start on this one or shall I? It's I have to put it in average because I liked a lot of aspects of it, but it's clunky as all get out and yeah. And it is. Look, a, I, when I first Patty saw Jenkins it. has George Lucas syndrome where she was successful, really successful once, so nobody wanted to tell her no, and yeah. someone really should have put her on some kind of leash. Um, when I first saw it, I enjoyed this movie. And upon subsequent views, I liked it less and less and less as it goes on to the point mm-hmm. where I wonder, should I ever watch it again? Because I'm losing all good feeling about it. Um, I will put it at average as well. But, okay, so... Okay, what to, what to say? There's things... When I watch, when I watch a movie, I can, I can watch it on a visceral level. First, okay, I get it. You know, put your brain at the, but as it goes, you got to think about certain things. And there are, there's story beats. There's um, no character really to to the film in any case, in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's just lost. I was looking forward to seeing Kristen Wig. Kristen Wig is the cheetah, but we never really got that. This is a case of they decided we're going to have two villains. And I would like to point out that there was no real villain in Wonder Woman until the end. Wonder Woman would have been the perfect film had it not had a central villain that they did in Ares. But even still, it only had one. You were able to focus on character. You were able to focus on a lot more than just plot. With Wonder Woman 84, it was all plot. 
And because there was no real story, what they wanted to do was get from one action set piece to the other action set piece without setting up why you even should give a shit about mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm, that was going mm -hmm. on. So once again, on I think on a visceral level, like you shut your brain down, you can watch this film and you can have a good time with it. But I don't think it ever even skirts with the idea of being a good movie. Let me see what everybody else thought. Um, comic Book Frog says average. All righty. The closest I got to Watchmen is Doomsday Clock, uh, which was okay for what I read it, said Marania. Uh, average, says Ed Brewer, for the Wonder Woman 84. I think that same night Young Rock Season 3 starts. I didn't see Wonder Woman 84. Was shocked about the uh, rapist plot point. I... I think it's a ra you know the rapist plot point if you're looking at through the eyes of the woke. I think that's a that's it's a gotcha, well actually actually gotcha no I think it, I, I think it's the anti woke that pointed no, that no, no, out. No, but no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to apply it to the black pills as well. They were looking for their gotcha moment. They got their gotcha moment. Uh, obviously, what's actually going on if you're thinking about it is that she's not seeing Chris Pine. She's seeing this other guy. Um, and of course her, him using the body, they were like, Oh, you know, we got you now. And seriously, I, it was overplayed. It was really, it, it was a bit much guys. Yeah, seriously. Um, but that being said, reverse it. And the woke would have been going fucking nuts over it as well. Yeah. There would have been cities on fire if that, if that uh, had, if I'll that had ever been reversed says mk could have been better had patty not wrote part of yeah they should have just let her direct and not bother with it they should have um, gotten the guy who do, who wrote the first one to come back and be her partner again and this guy saying you boys still going yep yeah, we've got we got two more films here and we'll save the rest for tomorrow or thursday and yes we are coming back to it um because i want i want to finish this one all right, so uh, we also not, have to finish the horror not one. I'd actively seek out, says Marania. Uh, average says Krona. Not uh, I'm, I'm noticing a pattern by the way. Everybody, everybody has voted for it. Says Pedro Pascal was the best thing about the film. Gal Gadot's charm could not save this film, and Cheetah was pointless. That said, it's bad. I uh would go the other direction. I liked Cheetah if they had written her fully. Like if they made a full movie with a decent writer writing the movie on either villain, I think it would have been that much better. I Joe think what Rogers they were says it's bad. I think what they were trying to do with Cheetah is basically do the same thing as Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, but they didn't do as well as Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Movies uh, seem like a Franken movie. Eighty four was disappointment. I guess Moran, you didn't go Betty by time. I always think of the chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, oh, she makes some good snickerdoodles and some great sugar cookies as well. Uh, chocolate chip cookies are my husband's favorite. Uh, mine are snickled, snickerdoodles. Uh, Wonder Woman 84 is okay. Not sure if I'll ever watch it again. Uh, at some point in time, I'll do a, I'm going to start at the beginning and just watch everything. Normie's noticed that while watching it with me and they like everything, says Rhaegar. Um, I don't know. We were supposed to be looking for gotcha moments. And yet, that does happen quite a bit. Uh, yeah, Cheetah, I liked more than Max, to be honest. Uh, they just made her turn evil too fast. Yeah, it really did seem like, let's just flip it. All right, what we got is seven average, one bad. Um, I'm thinking this is a, it falls to average. Yep. That's just not enough to bring it down. So uh, next up, the last of the night, and then we'll uh, we'll continue this tomorrow or Thursday. I'm saying that because Gail's off tomorrow, and... Um, Depends on what she wants to do. If she wants to go out, she wants to hang out. That's what I do. Um, unfortunately, her days off aren't as set as they used to be. So if she's home and she's like, hey, let's just chill out, relax, come on over, watch a movie or something. Uh, that's what I do. Hence, we didn't do this on Sunday. <laughs> mm -hmm. All righty. So uh, Wonder Woman, let me type this in and then we'll get started. Why don't you start us off? Um. This one is really, really good. Um, I wouldn't call it great, though, because mostly of the ending. I think a lot of people have said it was great right up until the ending where it, where it kind of turned its back on the idea that Ares doesn't cause war. He just sort of acts as a muse for it. That was a really interesting concept that would have been nice to explore the idea of a villain you simply can't beat because it's a force of freaking nature because, well, he's a god. Um, 
And then they just turned it into a giant CGI battle because Zack Snyder insisted. So, yeah, it's it's good. It's really good. It's got a lot of heart. It's not great. Because of the ending, mostly. And the leaving okay, I'm, the... I can't, uh, I can't uh, really... You know what? I'll, I'll just put my opinion out there. I don't... I'm not like, oh, you're so wrong about that. Um because I'm one of the people that say it. I think it would have been better had they used uh, Ares as a con, uh, a, a uh, like a construct. Uh, what am I trying to say? Um, not an actual villain. There was a, a, for, a force, a force of nature that it's yeah, impossible to actually destroy. The, the the ending. They needed a big fight. Okay, I get it. Uh, that being said, the it the ending does not ruin everything that came up before it to me this is a very well written movie with very thought uh, thought out characters including etta candy i mean like all the way through they they're done i would have liked to have seen a redemption for the sniper um but that, that was uh, that's a minor nitpick yeah. you know he he can't shoot it's like they were setting it up but they never paid it off um the indian was actually a, a demigod that, and they never touched upon that. But these are things that are left out of it. What was in there, though, was fun. It, the action scenes were incredible. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this film from top to bottom. Granted, I saw it in IMAX 3D. The scene of her jumping into the water is one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen in a movie because it was in the IMAX 3D. So I, a lot of this, uh, and I can watch it at any time. So I'm still going to go with great on this one. All righty. Uh, let's see if they agree with me or you. Better than 84, probably still average, but uh, we'll vote good, says Ed Brewer. Okay. Uh, great, says Comic Book Frog. I liked Wonder Woman when it came out, but the more I see it, the stupider it gets. So bad. Wow, you went all the way down to bad. Um, Wonder Woman gets a B because the third act gave me epilepsy, says Rhaegar. Good, says Joe Rogers. And uh, let's see, Wonder Woman is great for me. Uh, in my opinion, the best comic book movie with a heroine by far, says MK. Loved how she was a fish out of water and Steve had to teach her about man's world. I loved it. All right. Wonder Woman is good, not great, but good, says Trusty. Okay, so we got one good and one great. Wonder Woman was good, says Jim Sorensen. And uh, did not see Wonder Woman, says Marania, but... By going by what I've heard about it, I'd rate it as good. All righty. Uh, let's see. Is a secondary villain. Yeah. Um, I'm actually glad that they didn't have a secondary villain. I guess they were Eric kind was. of setting up Dr. Poison to be one, and I kind of wish they had gone with it. But Yeah, I guess Dr. Poison would be the secondary villain. And I guess you know, it kind of worked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Woman is the best super superheroine movie. I cannot argue with that. Says, the, uh, the bar Wonder there is not high. The so. child, they made Wonder uh, Wonder War One, uh, uh, made World War One a binary good and bad war, which is an insult to the war itself. Uh, Gal Gadot was great in, in it herself. Uh, thigh <laughs> says Rhaegar. Uh, though not thigh. No, though though he says. I really was hoping they'd focus on Doctor Poison more. That would have been kind of cool. Um, yeah, that that would have been kind of cool. But I do like the idea of Ares being that. But if you fl flipped it a bit, then Dr. Poison becomes the main hero. Um, now she's got a, you know, she's given a poison and now she's got to fight through to stop the bomb, even though the chemical mix that Dr. Poison throws at her starts to weaken her. So we see her have to push on and on and on to get to the plane to stop the plane. Her and uh, Steve, um, Stop, get, finally make it to the plane they can't stop the bomb and it explodes she's still Here. strong enough to survive she was there to see steve get blown up and that's why she uh she recedes and she doesn't show up when all those disasters happen until of course jla boom you've got your explanation that's the that's the movie i would have gone for see see the way i would have i would have done it is um, Diana gets a victory over Ares by convincing 
Dr. Poison to disarm the bomb herself. Oh, that's, okay. how, that's how I would have done it. Not a not a big battle, but a well you, Wonder Woman Wonder Woman's greatest power has always been being the embodiment of hope and truth. So I think that would have been an interesting but you way. You have to you have to explain her not showing up until 1984. Yeah, I I, I don't think that's the I don't think that needed to be addressed in okay. Wonder well, Woman. What itself. we do have here is a good movie. We've got one bad, but we've got seven goods and three greats. So I think it falls into the good category. Yep. This is our last uh, last one for the night. Now, tomorrow or Thursday, it's going to be one of those, uh, hey, pop-up live stream happening mm -hmm. around 9 o'clock, uh, depending on what Gail wants to do. <laughs> if she yep. wants to go out, we're going out. Um, I'm not going to say no for that at all. But mm -hmm. this is where we stand. I'm going to hold this. I'm going to save it. And uh, there we go. So awful we have birds of prey superman and and then what we're going to do is we're going to rank them yep. all right and how that's going to work is i'm going to say okay what do you think the worst of these four are and we're going to work our way all the way up until we get to this one and we figure out which one is the number one dc film of all time uh -huh. bum, bum, bum. all right cool 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 my personal ranking for the majority of the movies uh, on this tier list would be average or lower. A lot of people think that of the DCU. She's not wrong. I'm a little bit different though. I kind of, I kind of dig on the DC movies, but you know me, I love superhero films anyway. Uh, that being for said, me it we, depends. For me it depends. we have managed to run a three hour and 35 minute live stream here, guys. Uh, that I'm not going to erase because of length. That's going to sit here. So uh, that's cool. All right. But uh, thanks for hanging out with us as we did that. Once again, uh, look for us uh, tomorrow or on Thursday. I'll try to make an announcement. Um, I'll try anyway. Uh, let's see. I did uh, find a another big dog for this weekend. It is another Superman-related book uh, for this week's auction. But once again, it's another iconic Superman book. And it is issue number 53 of Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. Now, what makes that iconic? This. It's uh, him as the turtle man. Is he too turtly for the turtle club? I don't know, but there you go. All right. He is uh, also showing up in this week's au auction or uh, some of the ones that showed up in last week's. So there you go, guys. And... Uh, yeah, by all means, please join us for that as well. And uh, there we go. All right. Uh, once again, thank you very much. If you don't mind uh, clicking like, share, doing all that kind of stuff, that always helps. And if you want, you can go over to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the tip jar. Link's in the description below. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. To everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. Have a good night. Cheers, guys.